live. Your stream is live. Oh my God. Are you ready? Yes. I have to call this here and rules committee meeting in, to order. Roll call now, Mr. Mays. Present. Mr. Davis. Present. Ms. Mills. Present. Ms. Elwood. Yes, present. <laughs> Ms. Gr Mr. Graves. I'm present. Ms. Worthen. Present. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Any public speaking right now, this portion to, for the public to put input? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, my name is Ariel Mitchell, and I'm here from 7590 East uh, Linden Avenue on the north side of town. Uh, we are the people are really glad for Miss Coco from my college to be here to straighten out Miss Galloway's situation when she be opening up the the council meeting of the chair and insulting Miss Councilman Maids. And we the people are really welcome, Miss Coco. Thank you. That's all. Thank you so much, Miss. Any of my colleagues like to response? Council response. I just want to thank Ariel for being such a committed resident to always be willing to address this council. Thank, thank you, Mr. Larry. All right, we got yeah, oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Confirmation. Yeah, thank you. I, 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 I listened close to Ariel Mitchell as a member of the public for many years. And I know I used to speak before I was a council person from the podium, just as Ariel do, Quincy Murphy, um, Art Woodson, and whatever. And I don't always have to agree with folks, but Mr. Mitchell, if you really listen to what he say, he's reflecting what I hear in the community all the time. And people can say what they want about what Mr. Mitchell says, but I think he's pretty sharp. And it's something that he speaks on and picks up on, and it makes a lot of sense to me. So I thank you for your commitment to keeping up with what's going on in the city. And I'm fascinated with all of the different people he you know in the various departments and the way that he treats people and the way people treat him. I pray that it stays that way, Mr. Mitchell. Thank you, God bless you. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Any others probably like to speak? Any other colleagues like to make a comment? All right, that brings us to the discussion item, which is the main reason, which is on this will be resolution 190425. Discussion, discussion rules govern meetings of the council. And we have a guest speaker, Ms. Eleanor Stewart, is with us, a professional parliamentary. And Ms. Eleanor Stewart, at this time, you have. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here and pleased to see all of you. Um, I think that, for starters, before we get to the rules themselves, having had the opportunity to watch some of your meetings, I think there are some comments I'd just like to make about motions, if we could go for that first. Um, I think one of the things, and it was interesting because just this week in my class that I teach on parliamentary procedure for students who are studying for the next level of the, uh, in the National Association of Parliamentarians, like all credentialing organizations, they have different levels. And we were wrestling with, and anybody who really likes the uh, parliamentary procedure, we were wrestling with uh, what's two and a half pages in the book on how they decide which motions are debatable and which are not. So if you're interested in parliamentary procedure, pages 396 to 99, talk about why, how they decide, and they being, of course, the authors of the book, how they decide to follow what Robert's rules set out in the first place, using his guiding principles on which motions should be debatable and which should not. And I bring this up because I think we need to look at the chart a bit because I think you're debating some motions that are undebatable, uh, unintentionally, and I think that you could do some better without it. I want you first to look and find the column that is debatable. It's listed at the top of the sheet, and if you can follow down, let's see, going to um, third column across, mm -hmm. debate. 
And if you'll notice, both here on the privileged and subsidiary and on the incidental, there aren't many debatable motions because the point of Roberts is to conduct an efficient meeting. And there are times when talking about what you want to make a motion about is not particularly useful. <coughs> so for example, one on limiting or limiting debate, the time for debate. It wouldn't be useful to debate how much time you wish to spend debating. So that is not a debatable motion. You can see that it has an A, you can amend it. So if the motion was made up, let's say you had an item coming up that you knew was going to be quite lengthy. I move that we limit the debate on this motion to two speakers, to two, each council gets, gets to speak twice. That would be a motion. Now you just, that's the motion, it's on the floor, it's been made, seconded, it's stated by the chair, and you're debating it, and you think, well, I'm sorry, you don't debate it. It's on the floor, but somebody says, you know, twice is not enough. I move to amend by striking two twice and inserting three times. That would be an appropriate amendment, but we don't debate whether or not we're going to debate. So I just am pointing out, and on this side, whoa, there's none. The only appeal is debatable, and under point of order, there's an asterisk. Point of order is not debatable. It is a time when a person makes a single point, one sentence, and it's not debatable. Um, the way it gets an asterisk is if the chair should say, perhaps someone makes a point of order on something and the chair says, I'm not clear on what, how I should rule on this. Therefore, I'd like to turn it over to the body. All those in favor of the point say aye, those opposed say no. And, I'm sorry, that's debatable. Then you can talk about it. But if there's no uh, request for the council to make the decision on a point of order, it is not debatable. The person who makes the point gets one sentence, and then it's either granted, or <coughs> the point of order, or it's not. So I think that that's, that's a Yes. I, I think, uh, may I continue on this for just a moment, council member? I think Mr. that what Chair, we want to look at is that there are... Well, you can continue right after she's done, Council. I just want I just want to finish the point. Go. So I want you to concentrate on this column as you have the meeting. Have the chart with you and look at it and say, wait a minute, are we now debating an item that is not debatable? Uh, you spent some time on suspend the rules, debating whether or not you should suspend the rules. Please notice. Suspend the rules, not debate. And um, in the motion to suspend the rules, um, the motion must state the specific purpose, but not, but not the number of the rules. So an example would be, I move to suspend the rules and take up the report of the building committee. Suspending the rules does not suspend all rules, only the one rule you're pointing out. Thank you for letting me complete that. Councilman, go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I did take time to come to this Rules Committee meeting, and one of the main things that our rules and has been like that for years, that don't mean it has to stay like that for years, but council rules supersede Roberts' rules of parliamentary procedure. I think that's important in a Rules Committee meeting, unless people want to change that. Roberts' rules is so voluminous and is so detailed that causes for long meetings and confusion, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It calls for long meetings and confusions, Ms. Galloway, because a lot of people don't know them. Even people who know them for years gets bogged down. So council rules, in my opinion, has been designed to be fair and simple. And they supersede Robert's rules, in my opinion, for a reason. And <laughs> this ain't my first <coughs> rules committee meeting. I've seen the rules change. These current rules that this new council is seeing, they didn't used to be like that. These are really 
uh, down in meticulous, and I know out of which council and which rules committee they came out of. I was hoping to come here today to first talk about council rules, which supersedes Robert's rules, and see what we could get basically to understand to be a fair uh, meeting that could be conducted without bogging down. We bog down some time on these particulars, and it takes sometimes 10, 15 minutes, and it happened two, three times a meeting. So I'll acquiesce and listen to all of these particulars about Robert's rules, but I think we only get to that after we first peruse council rules in order to see what we can agree on, just like in the Bible. You do unto others as you have them do unto you. And so when you get basic council rules, then when they don't address it, you turn to Robert's rules. There's some value in what's being said here, but I didn't. This is the first rules committee meeting we didn't have. We are the council. I think we first should look at what we can agree upon and then turn to Robert's rules. Because if we start inserting all of Robert's rules, I think that's what people on the council is missing. That's what's bogging us down. Thank you, Mr. Mays. I, council Member Mays, I have it on my agenda, but since I did it the last two times, I skipped over it this time. So I will back up and show, tell you again the funnel of laws, because your comment is absolutely correct. We start with the U.S. Constitution, then any federal laws that are applicable to the council and to the community, to the municipality, the Michigan Constitution, any Michigan laws applicable to the community, um, and uh, for, for meetings, those really focus on the Open Meetings Act and Freedom of Information, then your own city charter and what it says, that's a very important document, then the rules that you have adopted covering the meeting, which is what we're going to discuss now, and then comes Roberts. And in fact, your rules say that. Yes. Your rules say we will check on Roberts if it doesn't cover what else is in. So let's go to the rules. I think we all have copies. So we call that the funnel of laws. And in if you will notice in my opening comment, it is understood that the Flint Council rules can vary from Roberts Rules of Board and newly revised. In any cases where the council chooses to adopt rules that vary with Robert, the rules adopted by council will prevail. <coughs> in that understanding, I have noted places where the council rules may be incomplete or do not follow the 11th. Um, the actual name of the book I have noted, which is in the rules is in rule 1.1. You see it's so important to have to them. And I have inserted federal in front of state. So in the first line of rule number 1.1, all matters of procedure, not specifically by council rules, federal, state, or local law. There we go. Um, if a conflict arises, between council rules and Robert's Rules of Order, council rules take proceedings. And then I have noted that in 1.2, after the words open to debate, which is the next to the last sentence, I think this is not a change from what you have, but it makes it clearer no member is allowed to speak more than once on an appeal, except for the chair, who may speak a second time at the close of debate. A majority or a tie vote of the council members sustains the decision of the chair. Because I noticed that you had a tie vote and nobody was quite sure which way that went. So again, this is not deviating from anything you have, it's just making an addition. So if it's a tie vote, um, it goes, it sustains the chair. Okay, and then, if you have a question, please. Yes, okay, through you to um, Coco. Um, 
COCO 1.2 has been uh, a concern because it, it doesn't really define what the chair can do. Sometimes our meetings, um, if you're chairing, unless somebody does a point of order, um, it's as if you can't address if, if you're going off topic. Is there an area? And so we always seem to end up going to 1.2 that, in my opinion, doesn't really define how the chair has whatever the chair rights are to keep the, the um, meeting moving progressively in right in order. One of the things I agree that you need to test, test is germane. And that is um, something that is defined as basically staying on the topic. And remember that when you, when you somebody goes off the topic, you don't need to, that's not the chair's, you don't really, the, the process to appeal the decision of the chair is not the right action to take. The right action to take is this call for the orders of the day. That's what the chair says. That anybody, oh. anybody can say. So if, a, if you're debating one topic and somebody else is talking and they're saying something about something entirely different, um, which we're given to doing. I mean, I, I was at a council meeting last night. We did that very well, way off topic. But fortunately, there, the president of the council said, wait a minute, I, I think we've lost sight of where we are, which is a nice way to say. Can so that is appropriate. For the chair to say, but it would also have been appropriate had another council member said, could we please get back to the to item on the floor? Can we please get back to the motion that we're discussing? And you notice that it can interrupt a person when they're speaking. And so, so Coco, if that happens and someone says, call for the um, orders of the day, what is the response of the chair? What the is chair the has to say, the orders of the day have been called for. We will return to the best discussion of the motion. And then if the chair says that, then it can be appealed if they want to, of course. Right. But the chair can do that. Well, actually, the, a person could also, even getting aside from appeal, a person could also, I move that we continue to discuss the item not on the agenda or not on the floor. Right. Okay. And then you could take a majority vote to allow that. So there are, so in other words, the chair can say at that point, you're correct, that's not discussion on the motion. Or a member could say, I move that we stay off topic. So can I just give you an example? Because this is supposed to, to me, be real life. So for instance, um, Mr. Davis says, um, uh, I'll call for the order of the day. Um, and then I said, there's a call for the quarter order of the day. Um, do they have to say what it is? Because like someone has said, um, we're not Jermaine. And then well, a response will be, I'm Jermaine, I'm Jackie, I'm Tito. <laughs> I mean, this is serious I, business. I understand. And so I with actually that, the what do you do as the chair if that type of response happens? Then you have to say that that is not appropriate. The motion on the floor is, okay. or the resolution before us is, or the topic we're addressing is. And the, the challenge is always, what if you say that and the person will not behave? Well, you read the rules in the beginning of the meeting and you have uh, uh, things to do in your rules, but they are not working in your case. And I know that that has been the case, that you no longer have an ability to remove somebody from the meeting. Well, we do. We now we realize now that we can vote on it as a body to have that happen. So, but, that. but that's what we would have to do. The that's only true. way that if someone, any of us, doesn't conform, then our colleagues need to consider taking a vote. Okay. Yeah. And um, a vote to censure is is appropriate, which is a vote to censure. It does not have any um, punitive value in the sense that the person is removed. But um, I'm dealing with a situation actually now in the East Coast, a president of a university has been censored by the faculty 33 times. But, and that's on her record, but the fact is that does not cause any difficulty. 
until the faculty finally rise up and say to the board of the trustees, get rid of them. Councilman Fields. Okay, a uh, couple questions here. So, this column that says interrupt, it's on page two of this thing. Right. Okay. To raise a question of privilege, a call for orders of the day. What, what's a question of privilege? Excuse me, I can't hear. It's too hot. It's too cold. Something that has to do with your presence in the meeting being interrupted by something, whether it's a lot of talk or it's, it's somebody said that meeting was very hot the other day. You know, that only, and for a while, you're just dripping, you don't do so well. So it's a personal privilege, something that will make you better for the meeting. Okay. Um, so you don't have to have the floor to say a uh, call for the orders of the day. No. You know, if Alan gets off topic, I don't have to wait for Monica to give me the floor. Okay, but the chair, if Monica's chairing, okay, uh, the chair does have to respond if Alan doesn't stop or doesn't yes. get back on the topic. Yes. Okay, and so what Monica would do then is to say, you're out of order, Mr. Briggs? We never say you're out of order. We say, the point is out of order. This is not, this is not germane to the topic. So you point out what's, uh, that's one of the things that I hope you can address, because Roberts very clearly says, you're never supposed to say anybody else's name. And that's happening a whole lot in your yeah. meetings. Okay, I don't want to get off task. I'm no, not no, 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 I won't. Okay, Thank you. so so the chair then has a responsibility if uh, Councilman Griggs, okay, refuses to get back onto topic, to then say, um, or could say, that's your first warning. You are out, and, and can say, your point is out of order. It is not germane. And Ms. Councilman Griggs just keeps... Well, yeah. and, you know, so you have a warning. Right. And then we have a removal. But does the chair then say, I'm calling for a vote to remove Councilman Griggs? I think it would be better for a member to make it. Or if you had a rule that said, if you're warned three times, then it's automatic. Right. Then the chair would say, the member has been warned three times, and it is now uh, time to take the vote. So it's not is unlike. It three times? No, no, no. I'm, I'm just I'm saying, oh, for example. I'd like two times. For example, in bylaws, you often see if you miss three consecutive meetings, you're automatically removed. That's a better way to do it than saying if you meet, miss three consecutive meetings, then they can vote on you. If you miss three, you're out. So if you set a number of times, I have Okay, so my next question, well, I want to go back to this right. appeal. Yes. Appealing the chair's decision. Now, one of the things I've noticed, and we talked about it before, and we went right back to it, um, we'll have an appeal on the floor. And then somebody will, I guess, uh, is being debated, right? Yeah. And and a member will say, point of order on the appeal. And then we go into an endless cycle of point of order, appeal. Of, yes. I thought I thought when an appeal is on the floor, you couldn't call point an of order. An appeal is not appealable, first of all. An appeal is not appealable. Page 300, 256, paragraph 2. Uh, if a point of order is raised while an appeal is appending, there is no appeal from the decisions chair on this. On an appeal, no member may speak. Well, but the point simply is, if you're in the meeting and it suddenly says, well, this is way too complicated, you've done something wrong. Because Roberts is very, remember, he's an engineer and a military man. It's very methodical. So when you have an appeal, you can't appeal an appeal. So, can we, to be clear in our rules, and we need this, right. okay, can we literally say in our rules that there is no point of order or point of information allowed while an appeal is occurring? No, uh, if a point of order is raised, it can happen while there's an appeal. 
but there is no appeal from the chair's decision on the point of order. In other words, if there's an appeal on the floor and someone makes a point of order, the chair gets to rule and there's no appeal on that. Oh, God. But a point of order is... A point of order is permitted. A point of information. Uh, Point. And is let's remember, a, yeah, order, yeah. the word is request. request for information. And I think I would like it if you could switch over to saying request. Because it's not a point, it's not, you're not telling a person something. You're not saying, let me make this point of information. You are asking for information. Right. And it must be in the form of a question. Not, did you know? <laughs> not, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, that's not, so that's so, so. If you could make the switch to the word request, that might help. Go ahead. If an appeal of the chair is in process, then you can have a point of order. Right. But that point of order is not appealable. The chair simply states what it is, and that's the end of that. So that would stop the strain. Yeah. And yeah. And, and also an appeal is not appealable, so. Okay, well, I don't know if this is the correct time, but on point of information. Um, request I, for information. Request for information. Well, um, I, wanna, I wanna see if I can get you to kind of be okay. thinking that. Because yeah. if you say request for information, right. it's a different concept. Yeah. That, that's why they, and they say in the book, that's even why they changed it. Because people thought they were supposed to be giving information instead of asking for it. And they went so far as to say it has to be in the form of a question. Okay. Can I make a request for information? Can okay. um, that This is, we're in the meeting and this is my literal request for information. And so, well, this brings up my point because I'm being interrupted and I don't get to finish my the point of what I'm saying. Yeah. I would, you know, if you would all. And I know you don't want to do that, but mm -hmm. but that's what. Kate, I don't have a problem. The happenstance Calm of it is down. I okay. don't have a problem. Remember that when a person is interrupted, they get to choose whether or not they wish to be interrupted. That's good. Because because if you were adhering to your rules, you would be timing. And it's not fair right. for another council member to ask a person during their time of speaking a question because that time is counted against that council member, not against the person who's making the request for information. Please go ahead and finish the thought and then we'll come to you. Okay. I would like to have it actually in the rules that you can't even ask for a request for information until after whoever is currently speaking and has the floor has finished speaking. Absolutely. And that way, you can't use that to take the floor and interrupt that person. That way, that would be, and I would suggest that if you want to put in that rule, that you expand it to include all of them. Point of order, point of information, um, request for, uh, sorry, request for information, Point of order and parliamentary inquiry. All should not <clears throat> interrupt if that's what you want to go So I, I'm not sure how we're, do we need a, a, a vote on this as we go along or are we in general agreement? I think, or how you, should, do I think you should, we should go through with notes and then have a new set of rules prepared and adopt the new rules. Uh, however, you can also do them one by one. I do have a council currently working on revising the whole set of rules, but there are two that they felt they really needed to have because this could be a long process. So they actually introduced both at the meeting, council meeting last night and for a first reading. And so they're gonna vote on those separate from the completion of the entire set of rules. Okay, then I would like to make a motion that we do just that, that this particular rule is um, proposed at our next council meeting for immediate adoption. Yeah. We can change the council rule. Point of order. Point of this particular point of order. rule. It's a motion on the floor. I second that motion. 
It's been seconded. Discussion? Remember that um, I think there was a point to which somebody wanted to withdraw a motion, and mm -hmm. somebody said, well, you can't. Well, until the chair states it, you can you always, it doesn't matter if it's been seconded, if the chair hasn't stated it, then whoever made the motion can withdraw it. So remember that process. Motion is made, motion is seconded, chair states it. That always needs those three things to happen. And if the chair hasn't stated it, you can withdraw it. If the chair has stated it, the person may say, may I have permission? And the chair can say, if there's no objection. Mr. Chair. Yes. Yeah, it's oh, not we're actually, we're, we're working on a motion. Mr. Here. Chair. Yeah. Well, yes. let's, let's, let's make sure the motion is written down the way we want it. Right, and that's what I'll, that's what my request for information. It's not clear. It's okay. a new rule, so it's not clear. You made a motion, but you didn't clarify what it is. Well, let's let it be clarified. Mr. Chair. Custom made. Custom made. We in the middle of a motion, correct? Yes. Yes. Um, discussion on that particular motion. Um, Excuse me, sir. What I, the point I was making is Madam, we have Mr. not yet stated the motion. The motion has not yet been stated. <laughs> Mr. Chair, um, a motion was made and said. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing them discussing it, but what I started to say was she even left something out. A motion is made before it's properly second. The chair asks, is there a second? People can't just holler that out. I've watched just like she said, she watched when even <coughs> when I was removed. I heard Monica state around. Okay, we're not using names. I'm sorry, sir. You oh, were out of the room when we said you know, you were out of the room when we Mr. Chair, why are you you letting her do this? Now they just talking about not interrupting people, they just jumping in. If this is how we're going to conduct this rules committee meeting and you going to allow it when I get the flow with, well, that's why I left, not to interfere. But when I come back, if this is what's going on, I might better leave again. Oh, I know, Mr. Briggs, you shaking your head and she doing thumbs up. But believe me, I don't watch people treat me like this and they gone. This is really a rules committee meeting of the council. Absolutely. And when you call on me and give me the floor, when they hop in, even Coco, you politely just say Coco. I would. Which causes chaos and it causes a bad feeling with me. I'm not an outsider. I'm just a polite person who leaves so I can't be blamed. Then I come back and see this, and they're still trying to figure out a way to blame. And you got council people nodding their head because we want input. So let's take it from here and see if we can go better from here. Well, we certainly try to unify this body, and we want it to be inclusive of everyone. And um, quite naturally, it's going to cause a little uneasiness with all of us because hopefully we can implement more rules to get us on one accord, to unify us. And um, with Ms. Coco being here as a professional parliamentarian, um, this is going to be hit. this meeting going to be ran a little different than our average committee meeting because we more in still that class format. Point of information. Yes, sir. Is that motion going to be restated? It was made. That was a second. It ain't been restated. If it's never restated, I don't care. But that's just my. Well, we need clarity to the motion. And uh, the way Miss Worthen jumped in, yes, it would be correct to say is there a second? You know, from the chair behalf. But with all that said and done. We're here to unify this body, which is so desperate need, desperately needed. And Councilman Mays is imperative that you be a part of this meeting, not to set nobody aside to where we try to come against no one. We're not, this is not that meeting. Ms. Coco is here to help us rectify some issues because we, clearly something is wrong with this body, the way we hold our meeting. And this, this is the first meeting. We got an opportunity to, to correct it. So, you know, a lot of, I'm not a perfect chair. Matter of fact, this is my first, first chair. But please let us get something where everybody feel comfortable. I don't want nobody feeling slighted when we leave this meeting this day. Uh, Ms. Fields, clarify your, your motion. I would like to, but I have a question for Coco first. For our parliamentarian. Oh, you, you, you the motion I want to make. Okay, I don't know if I should say no one or no one except the chair. May interrupt the speaker. 
So what you're aiming at is that a rule that would say that the point of order, request for information, and parliamentary inquiry cannot interrupt a speaker. That a person who is properly, properly uh, interrupting a member who has been properly recognized to speak. So as you look at the proposed rule that a point of order, request for information, and parliamentary inquiry cannot interrupt a member who has been properly recognized to speak, and you're concerned that you don't want to limit the chair's ability to have the leadership in the meeting, because the chair is, after all, in charge. Okay, this, this would not apply to, shall we simply say, and this will not apply to the, for the chair. And I'm specifically saying chair because it, I don't want to say president or name somebody because right. you have the new rules properly what to do if none of those, those people are present, who else might be chair. In, in that case, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. The motion I would like to make is that that rule that was just read be brought to our next council meeting for immediate adoption. Okay, is that a motion? That is a motion. It's been stated. Can we get a half a second? Moved and seconded, yes. Councilwoman Gallagher. Mm -hmm. It's been properly second. Any discussion is great. Can we do that at this meeting? Or do we have to wait for a council meeting? Oh, no, that has to go to the council. council. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Chair. Yeah, Mr. Chair. We got three, I think, colleagues missing. Yes. Of course, if we move it to council or committee, it'll get to it. But my position is this. Hopefully, Eva might come back because I don't see myself supporting it because it's premature. We've just gotten started to the point of this. The point I'm trying to make is mm -hmm. this. If you're going to withdraw the time limits that never used to be there for 30 years, three minutes, five minutes, you give somebody the floor to discuss multi-million dollar business and policy, this is what we do. <laughs> Ain't no way I want an unfair chair sitting there, and I can't say point of order or point of information, time is run out. Now you get the time frames out of there, it might be well. It might be well, but if you get the time frames out of there, then the chair gonna have to have some opportunity to do something to keep it fair. Because with the way this council operates, one council person might speak for five, six, seven minutes, another one speak for three, and they debate who done spoke the longest. So the time frame that's never been there for 30 years discussing this big business, and some people do their homework better. They have better knowledge than us. And so the council lose knowledge because they done cut somebody off after three, four minutes. And the other council people don't have knowledge. People have met with mayors and legal department and whatever. So, you know, people are trying to be way... Call for the order of the day. Yep. The discussion should be on the motion that's on the floor. In fact, it is on the motion that's on the floor. We got a culture of difference going here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll see what Ms. Galloway has to say because we are on the orders of the day and that's the type of stuff I need. Mean. So the reason the reason why I wanted some clarification is because this was supposed to be beneficial when we're on time discussing. Originally and that's not what this is saying. It's it's actually identifying any time. Right. Originally, you you when you brought it up, Coco, you shared that when somebody is on a time frame and these things happen, it interrupts them and takes away from their time. Right. Yet the motion, as has been stated, is too broad. It needs to be when we're on our timed discussion time. Well, well that. I'm just saying that's originally where it came up with. Actually, it, 
And additionally then came up that people said they just prefer not to be interrupted, whether they're timed or not. They like I to finish the, okay. They like to finish their whole thought. Okay. So, so I I I have not observed though that in watching the meetings that the timing is taking place. So therefore right. Absolutely, so therefore I would I wouldn't frame yeah, it. I wouldn't right. frame it that way. That's good. No, yeah. thank you for the clarity. That helped me. I'm fine with that. Ms. Fields. I wanted to say that it is my hope that one of the rules that we're going to establish is anytime we're in a meeting, anytime we speak in a discussion, it's timed. Whether it's a special order, whether it's a resolution, whatever. So the time issue to me is not really relevant <coughs> to that because it is my hope and I have heard from other council people, they want that as well. That every time a council person speaks on, in a discussion, it's timed. I like to say this <clears throat> to make a difference in this meeting. First of all, animosity is still in the room that I'm picking up. The business still not going to get done that I'm picking up, and we're too rigid with the rules. Now let me say this: when it comes to a chair to me, if I mean, it should be five minute limit. It should not be no vacant of time. But the chair controls the room. I control this meeting right now. If Mr. Mays, as he was stating just then, I felt very relevant. He was saying that, okay, let's say he got more input from the administration. He knows subject matter, whether it's restoration or whatever it is. He got detail of it where he actually imparted information, but I'm the chair. We got five minutes. But the leniency of the chair could deem relevant what he's saying to continue as if Ms. Coco is sitting here giving us instruction now. We got to get out the animosity side and start thinking about business. That's why Ms. Coco is here. I'm not operating out of animosity. I'm trying to learn these rules that's going to make this thing function. To, it, it's very disrespectful. Rules can't govern us to make us do right. It ain't going to happen. We're wasting time. But if we, as a chair, get the respect of that chair to control the meeting, Miss Fields used her five minutes, but it's very relevant because she spoke to the day on the radio. They was talking about the Country Center Academy, and this guy was the. They had the superintendent, but I could have been the one who visited the superintendent to give you insight of what the superintendent is saying about Culture Center Academy and enlighten this whole body. But if my five minutes run up, I ain't able to enlighten nobody. But let me, let me, and then I'm, I'm, I'm gonna wrap up. It's very important to move the animosity out the room and let Ms. Coco give us room to hold this body together. We need glue. But it's got to be done in a respectful manner. And this, these rules ain't going to give you respect. That's why we here now. We have to get to a place where the chair, chair the meeting fairly, fairly. And I'm telling you, if we ain't willing to change what we've been doing, we wasting good time. Mr. May is absolutely correct. You don't want nothing to leave one colleague out and, and, and everybody else satisfied or you pit one against them. No, let's put all that mess to sleep. Let's try to make this benefit. We must be willing to do, and I got a lot of ideas of changes as well, but I don't want to do nothing that's going to make somebody feel like they, they didn't get, you know, ambushed. This is not ambush. We got to unify this body in a hurry. Miss Fields, you got it. In the case of this meeting or any other, the majority rules, we rule by vote. Now, I may not like the votes, often I don't like the vote, okay? But I have to follow the rules, the majority rules. But we don't just change the rules because one person objects, or one or two, it's majority rules. And I don't believe that it's not, that it's unfair to give everyone an equal amount of time under the rules to speak. You need to hone your ability to be more on task and precise in what you say. So just because Mr. Councilman Griggs thinks he has more, I'll use you for example, excuse me, has more to say on a subject than I do, that may or may not. Yes, we want to order directly to say names. To say another council member. I'm just going to use an example. Fine. And I, I, if I might quote 
in that section. It is on page 43, and it says, debate must be confined to the merits of the pending question. Speakers must address their remarks to the chair, maintain a courteous tone, and especially in reference to any divergence of opinion, and that's just what our chair is referring to, the animosity, the divergence of opinion, should avoid injecting a personal note into debate. To this end, they must never attack or make any allusion to the motives of members. As already noted, speakers should refer to officers only by title and should avoid the mention of other members' names. I think that would be a really good step, sir, to what you're aiming for Absolutely. if people did not mention other people's names. Absolutely. I, I stand corrected. If any council member, when they speak, cannot say what they need to say in the same amount of time everybody else gives, then that's too bad. But I don't think it is too bad because people are born with different levels of skills, intelligence, and so forth, but we're all elected. We're all elected. And so my position is this. People will gain and share different knowledge. And I don't care if the majority continues with these stringent rules. I think we'll continue with misinterpretations and problems. I would like to see a generic set of rules. You own to something when you talk about chairing a fair meeting, but we've got to make the rules and the playing field level. And we got to figure out a way when a chair, for whatever reason, abuses that whether somebody talking for five minutes or not we can figure out a way to correct it and all of the mechanics are here my position is how do we enforce the unequal application and then you know not only how do we enforce the unequal application i don't even know sometime if we really realize there's an unequal application and, and, and that's a problem when we don't even realize that we're doing and saying some of the same things. Now this rule might make people feel they don't want to be interrupted, but some of the same folks uses the rules to interrupt others. I've been the chair of finance, so I think we got an issue of what we talked about before over at my. We ain't just looking in the mirror, concentrating on ourselves. We making rules looking outside at others. And I don't know if it's going to go away, but I'm pleased that we're here in a rules committee meeting to make an attempt to try to straighten some things out. I will not be voting I'm favorable on this motion because if I'm understanding it, it was made in order to do something before other people got ready to review it. And then we holler today at this meeting of a form of six, five of the form six majority rules. I don't know what that means. And I don't know who can read what the majority gonna do. But now, Coco can tell you, if you listen, I've said this before, if people worried about the time, sometimes people been and did their homework and they gonna vote one way or another. Some of them do, don't. They gonna vote. Robert's rules, which is a good rule, when a motion happens, all you're trying to do is get the majority vote five out of nine. Robert's rules will tell you, you can call on the pro and the con. The pro and the con, you can alternate. Yes. See, people don't like for you to count their vote, I've noticed on this council. They'll say, I don't want to vote, they want to be a surprise. But if they want to enter into debate, we can speed a lot up because we'll know pro, con, pro, con. And now, unless somebody changed something, a vote, you, you count. And we can move on to the next issue. We ain't even got a form at the table. And folks don't even ask to be excused, but that's our rule. So I'm just saying, I know how the rule works. So I may I be excused, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. May. Point of order. Or, oh. Just so you guys know, you can't get it from the table. Our quorum was broken. Right. And so I don't know if technically our meeting should have been over. No. Okay. 
but it was effectively somebody should have called for a recess if people right. wanted to leave. Right. That would have been Absolutely. the appropriate recess. Do we need a oh, recess? Yes. No, now we have, I mean, the two of them got a Any other discussion? and broke the quorum that we only yeah. have four people. So I just want to know. Now to handle it, because right, usually right. you break up our recess. entire meeting. Okay. Recess. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Right. Take a recess. Oh, recess. take a recess right. first. Before they get up. Oh, okay. If somebody needs to get up, they should say, Mr. Chairman, could we take a five-minute recess? Okay. And if the chair wishes to, the chair could say, if there's no objection, we'll take a five-minute recess. Or someone could say, I move to take a five-minute recess and get a second and get voted on. Yes. Can you have Mr. Chair? I would request that Mr. Mays not be allowed to be part of the meeting unless he is sitting at the table with the rest of us in the vein of this conversation. Yes, that's right. Uh, Very good. Right. The question was asked, was that debatable? So that's a good time to go to your thing and see that recess is not debatable. Right. Why would you want to spend time talking about whether or not you want to right. recess? Right. Yes, yes Ms. Unbeknownst to Ms. Fields, you excused me. Yes, I requested I to be excused, and then I left the table. Why are we worried about so many others, and they didn't ask to be excused? I did it properly. Can you inform her of that? Mr. Gates, I'd like to answer that question. Mr. Gates, okay. yes. we, we are that because it's very disruptive. And that's why people are interested when somebody leaves and come, leaves the room and then comes back. It's very disruptive. And that answers the question. Thank you. Okay, so we are well off of our normal rules. Because although there is a motion for a new rule, um, there is still a five-minute rule and a two-time you can speak rule that has not been suspended. So it is my opinion, um, Mr. Chair, that unless Ms. Worthing or Mr. Wick wants to speak, I think I've spoken twice. Ms. Fields has spoken twice. I don't know if you've spoken twice. No. But I think that unless someone else has a... Um, Ms. Gordon. Um, I'm in favor of this not interrupting. Um, it's it's unfortunate we have to be stringent in our rules. If we had restraint amongst ourselves, we wouldn't have to have this rule. But um, I myself have been interrupted right in the middle of a point, and it's it's strategic. And it's not right because I've seen it happen not only to me, but to almost all of my colleagues. I want to hear what they have to say without interruption, not even just when I speak. I want to hear what they're saying. And, uh, and so if this is <clears throat> the rule that we need, I'm in favor. Can I say this before we vote on this? The spirit of everything we're doing is still out of order. It's still chaotic. It ain't going to change nothing when Coco leaves. But it could change. People don't really know I know what I'm doing when I say what I say. <clears throat> You're absolutely correct. Should nobody be interrupted within a five minutes speaking? But this is what should happen. Me being chair, I control the meeting. I could see what's relevant, and so could my colleagues see what's relevant. When we're having a good meeting, why let it go into discourse or disarray over foolishness of rigid of a meeting? So what I'm saying is this. If Councilwoman Galloway making a good point, the first five minutes is once you get five minutes, ain't no banking of time. There should not be no banking of time. Now, but me being chair, if, if Ms. Con uh, Councilwoman Galloway making a valid point on something, I really want to hear it. After that first, unless everybody else then use, the, if everybody else haven't used their time, I have to go to Miss Worthy. But I know it, she didn't complete her thought, but everybody only get five minutes. But if me deem worthy of going back to Miss Galloway to finish her, her comment, which was so valid, as a chairperson, I could allow her two or three minutes as a chair, or you as well, but nobody can interrupt her, you or nobody else. Ain't no request for information. That's not hard because I don't, I'm in a lot of meetings. We don't even have to bring this subject up. But the animosity has to be removed out the room. This is not real. 
This is not reality. Because you can't legislate righteousness, that ain't gonna happen. But respect of a chair controlling the meeting is easy. This meeting ain't when it's this right yet. It ain't gonna go. I know a little bit about chair meetings. I haven't never chaired a meeting in, in a, this capacity. But let me tell you something. The chair controls the meeting. But five minutes is no banking of time. That way you know when we done, we done. But as a chair, Ms. Coco, and you the parliamentarian, if I see Dean Fit, Ms. K. Fields bringing us something we know nothing about, and it's right on point, and we really itching to hear about this million dollar project, after everybody has spoke, Ms. Fields, you got two more minutes. Can you uh, tell us a little bit more? To me, that's the power of a chair. But that keeps the meeting moving forward. Instead of, you know, because for one, she wanted to finish her point. That's how we have to do it. We have to have some leniency in this well, thing other than just being rich. I think you have to be cautious about that. Mm -hmm. Because um, the issue is people being interrupted or how much time they're going to get. So until you tell me you're really going to count the time, I don't think that that's an issue because right now you're not counting the amount of time. Oh, okay. I mean, at the meetings, you are not. You're timing the public. Right. But, but I want to say you're absolutely right. No banking of time and no yielding time. There you go. Both of, both of those are, are not appropriate. Um, I think that this, for, for a good start, a motion that you can't interrupt is a good start. Absolutely. One of the things that will make it flow more carefully, Mr. Chairman, is if you're not interrupted, you can complete your thought. The problem is that when we interrupt people, they start the thought over again. Yes. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> correct. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Green. Okay. Point of interruption. The problem we, the reason we don't get much accomplished during each of our meetings is because we have counseled people that talk way too long. And we've got to start timing them or we're not going to accomplish anything. I mean, we've got a long agenda for this evening, but we won't even make it to it right. if we can't control council people's amounts of time they use in talking. If we don't, that's enough said. Thank you. Well, I, may I continue? Yes. Jermaine. You have a lot of conversation going on in your meetings that's not germane to the motion on the floor or the resolution. Absolutely. You spend a lot of time talking about how much time you spend talking. And that was my observation the other evening um, while watching uh, the, se the Je September 23rd meeting. I thought if they cut out all the time that they spend talking about talking, <laughs> they could probably save an hour. <laughs> Request for information. Yes, Ms. Hill. Is the chair aware that the motion that I made that's on the floor has nothing to do with the discussion that's going on about how long we talk, the time? That motion has nothing to do with what's being actually discussed. I've already forgotten the motion. Good point. <laughs> That, that point of order. Let's, let's go request, I'm going to read it. Okay. That point of order, request for information and parliamentary inquiry cannot interrupt a member who has been properly recognized to speak, and this does not include the chair. You're right, it has nothing to do with length of time. Well, it's time to vote. We take actual vote. Oh. All in favor? Repeat the motion, please. You want it straight? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that the point of order, request for information, and parliamentary inquiry cannot interrupt a member who has been properly recognized to speak, and this does not include the chair. All in favor? You got it? Constantly. Mm -hmm. Constantly. Okay. So basically, what we're doing is we're eliminating interrupting. Okay. All in favor? Sure, yeah. All opposed. All abstained. Mrs. Chair, I know that we are going to um, go further. And, and just as a note, sir, 
We never ask for abstentions. Mm -hmm. oh, that's incorrect. You never ask for abstentions. Okay. And, and that's across the board. That's just not in municipal government. That is just across the board. I mean, it's kind of hurried up. Yeah, right. But the, uh, all those in favor, those opposed, those who don't have and a clue. Is that what you're asking? Right. Those who don't have a clue? Yeah. <laughs> those, who, those who are sitting on the fence? Those who don't care to make a decision? That's right. really what you're saying. Okay. You're saying. So abstain. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Ms. Field got to it in you. I, I know there may be a blow for Copeland's presentation, but since we always stand the uh, chance of losing quorum or something yes. else, yes. I would like to make a motion to bring to council for another rule to change immediately. And that is that there is a five minute time limit discussion period, no matter whether it's a resolution, a special order, Absolutely. five minute time limit. Clarity. Clarity. Two, yeah. two yeah. times. One, five minutes in total. Well, see, that's banking the time. Yeah. We don't want no banking. Oh, that's too complicated. Right. Then one discussion, five minutes total. Ms. Coco, we oh, oh. we got uh, it has not okay. been. It's not been seconded. It's being oh. formulated. Oh, so there's a motion on the floor. Not yet, actually. We, and we don't have it a second. Oh, okay. And we're still formulating. Can I get? Let's is there a second? Clarity. Yeah, clarity. Did you mean five minutes for the discussion on the whole topic, or five minutes per person, or how many times per person? What, as the writer of the motion, what what exactly are we saying? I actually would like to give people a chance to speak twice, but no more than a total of five minutes in total. That's two and a half minutes. So it's either three minutes twice. twice. Okay, three minutes twice. No matter where Absolutely. we are on the agenda. Okay, three okay. minutes twice. Okay. Councilwoman Worth. I second that motion. It's been a motion on the floor, and there's been probably second any discussion. Mr. Pro Chair. <laughs> One second, Mr. Uh, Mays. That's great. Oh, oh. Point of order. Did you restate the motion? Oh, okay, I gotta restate it. Okay, the motion is the, the five minute, I mean, two times the three minutes. And uh, and that's for all committees or whatever on the floor. And and that would wrap it up. No banking of time or nothing. Two times the three minutes and there's been a motion on the floor and it's been property second and now we're in discussion. Mr. Green. I, I, I know we all probably will agree with the three minutes, but I think twice or two minutes I would prefer, but that's okay. That's just my thoughts. Yeah, I'm an engineer. Councilman Mays. Yeah. Mr. Chair, really, once a motion is made and put on the floor, you can really dissolve it and resolve it real quick by going back and forth in some cases with the pro and con. Mm -hmm. You might get it resolved without the second round. But the uh, Say that we have issues before us that we as elected officials in a municipality have to limit ourselves to three minutes. It's kind of not setting well with me. Of course, we can use the examples of the pipe replacement, restoration, contracts, so forth and so on. It just don't set well with me. And so, you know, I don't even know if this includes our special orders or our, what you call it, investigative hearings. This is just unprecedented. And it started the last term when certain people were trying to make certain rules that have now proven not to work. And so I'm going to continue to participate, and people are right, the majority rule. I just will continue when the time permits to try to shed light on some examples of good groups. I can support this. Any other discussion? I believe that if we have an unusual topic or something that's very contentious, something that's extremely involved, we can always make a motion to suspend the rules for that one topic to allow or we could 
make a motion to uh, extend our time by an additional five for that one topic. But I think it would help us get through these meetings at a reasonable time um, because most of the items that are before us aren't anything that requires more than six minutes from each council person. And um, so I disagree with Mr. Mays on that. Excuse me. I disagree. With the council member. With the council member who's Councilwoman Worth. Point of information. You could do it without even being that specific as who just spoke. You can just say, this is my position. That would be more, of course. Mm -hmm. okay. That wasn't really a request for information. Uh, yeah. It's a way that we got to be able to do to get a handle on this thing. And I'm out of order for speaking, but I'm responding to you. I like to go through the chair. And I would wish that others do. But if it's an extra rule for her, I can quit saying it. But okay. you know, I'm just. Okay. Come on. That would. No, I'm oh. stopped. Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, yeah, I think actually we're adding. A full minute to our debate time because it's really supposed to be five minutes but then we're always like oh well they're speaking again and what time do they have and it's so confusing I think this not only gives a person more time to speak but it's easier for the chair now three minutes the first time you can use all of it part of it you get three minutes and if you want to speak again you get three minutes you can use all of it part of it I think this will actually help us so I'm in favor well, okay. I got. I like to say this. I'm in favor with my colleague. I'm gonna tell you why. It really should stick to the five minute with no banking, cause them them is major steps. We moving like my colleagues say millions of dollars in all kinds of resolutions, and everybody ain't gonna use the five minute, and we won't be back and forth with point of order, point of information, or request. So therefore. If we only use five minutes, two times, we move in pretty fast and stable, and it'd be more exhaustive to get your point across. But three minutes at everything, is that's just right at council comment. And we trying to move millions of dollars, that really ain't making sense. And Robert's rule, if you check it, I do believe it says five. Ten minutes. Twice for ten minutes each. There you go. So, you know, I did my homework. And this is not governing good governance because if y'all don't use it, if Mr. Mays happenly want to use five, his whole five minutes, he should be allowed to. And like I say, and as a chair, when you move in a, a real meeting and take the animosity out the room, we're getting business done. We're getting business done now because we're trying to get to where we can have a meeting without hooping and hollering and calling police. And to do that, we got to have compromise. It ain't gonna always go my way or no way, but we gotta get it meet in the middle to try to get some kind of governance going. So I think that without banking time, to leave it at least that's half of what what Robert's request. But three minutes is ludicrous. You can't move this. In some things, it ain't gonna take two minutes. Cause I might say I want to say this and I'm done. Uh, Councilwoman, uh, Council President Fields. Is it? Are you aware that the motion says three minutes twice for a total of six minutes yes. per topic? Yes. Well, when you're saying that three minutes isn't enough time, we're not talking three minutes. We're talking six minutes. And I wouldn't mind amending that back to five minutes twice. Yes. No bank. I am not sure what the chair means by no banking. Ms. Coco put clarity. Yes. So, for example, if it's my turn and I speak, and, and it's allowed for five minutes, and I speak for four, I can't have one minute over here that I can add on to the second five minutes that I have. When you speak, whatever time you speak for, whether you choose a, whether you end up with a three minute or a five minute, if I only use one minute of my five, I, I, I don't get the other four. Absolutely. If I only use two minutes of my five, I don't get the other. Because otherwise, you're, you're creating something where it's not possible to keep track. It's not possible. Because now I could speak, if it's five minutes twice, I could speak 
let's see, four and a half, four times for how many minutes each? Right. So, you know, you can see that it just goes okay. away. So, so that's what the chair has wisely said no. And I also can't say, okay, I've only used two of my minutes. I give my other three minutes to the colleague sitting across the table. So no banking and no yielding. Disagree. Uh, oh, I wasn't through. So, okay, I just wanted to make sure that the chair and I were understanding the terminology in the mm -hmm. same way. Yeah. And I want it clarified for this meeting. Absolutely. Now, this is a good time to test something we've had problems with. Mm -hmm. I would then either like to withdraw my motion and make a different one, or to amend this motion. So what would the parliamentarian suggest? The parliamentarian would say, um, Mr. Chair, if there's no objection, I would like to amend my striking three and inserting five, simply because since the chair stated the motion, it doesn't belong to you anymore. So even if you ask to withdraw it, the chair's going to have to ask everybody else, is there any objection to the member withdrawing the motion? So either case, something is going to happen where the chair is going to interact with the other members. But we don't have to vote on that. I root point of order. No, we don't amendment. have to. Councilman, I would say we do vote. To I mean, withdraw a motion. No, do not. Right. That's what to said. withdraw. That's what she yes, but the withdrawal that I saw was before the motion had been stated by the chair, at which oh, point it still belongs to the member. Um, so it would be appropriate to amend. Okay, so Mr. And Mr. Chair. you can make the amendment or someone else can make the amendment. Mr. Chair, I would like to amend my motion. I object. I haven't had my part in the discussion yet. Point of order. Ah. You have to get the floor. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah, she should have been called on. Well, I was waiting on my to be right, called. Right, right, right. So that you, so that, who is keeping track of who speaks? I am. Chairman, you, Mr. Both, you both keep the time, of the time of the time and, or just are, they, they keep, that, that person keeps the time mm -hmm. and <laughs> you keep track of how yes. many times. Okay, I'm just making it, I'm just clarifying. Mr. Who's Chairman. Who's put the rules mm -hmm. on. So before you accepted or called on her for her amendment, would you have known she was going to make an amendment? No. Hmm. Okay. Point of, point of information. There is none. My point of information, would it be fair for the purpose of this meeting to just suspend the rules? So we yes. can talk. That's yes. what I think. This is getting ridiculous. Is it, my turn, Mr. Chair? is it my turn to speak, Mr. Chair? Go ahead, Mr. Wiggs. Thank I'm you. With this. I have two points to make on this, uh, this councilwoman's motion. One is two, three minutes are better than one, five minutes because when you speak, say, three minutes, then there might be more discussion. You go, oops, I forgot to add something. And then you get it back and you get to add that something. My second point is two, three minute talks are enough on any one of our items on our agenda. We are supposed to have our agenda 48 hours in advance notice. And if we don't do our homework and don't study the agenda and can't get the right words out of our mouth in each one of us in a total of six minutes, then we're worthless. We should not even be in the meeting. Thank you. Um, it's Mr. Yeah, Mr. Chair, if we under the same roof, this field's been spoke twice on this, and, and it ain't a motion. And I mean, right. it's a motion to amend, but I don't know if it was restated, second, whatever. There's no more talking about talking. That, I'm just pointing out, sir, what it is that I'm referring to. Point of order. Mm -hmm. What order were you doing? Um, I mean, I'm I sorry, I, I think, think you weren't in the room. I can I know what I'm talking about. Can I, I make my point? Continue, Ms. Bates. Let me give my card back to you. My position is this. This is my second round on the original motion. Oh, there's been no second motion or amendment made in property. Second, I'm on my second round. My point was she tried to get back in a third round. And all I'm saying is 
The point is this. This is ridiculous. We've got a guess. Let's just vote to suspend the rules and have a meeting so she can inform us and we can talk Request to each other. Request for information. And I, I beg your pardon, I interrupted you as against the next rule I want. I, I'll be quiet, but the, I don't know how to do this correctly. My second time to speak, I started to make a amendment to my motion. And Mr. Okay, the council member hadn't had an opportunity to speak the first round. But I hadn't given up my second time to speak. It should have gone from that council member to me, not is to this a different a long council point member. Interruption that I, that this is I mean, exactly, no, I'm, this is a good point. Because as the meeting is being chaired, you can't know when you call on somebody for their second time if they're going Absolutely. to make an amendment or if they're going to make Absolutely. a motion to refer. Absolutely. So therefore, you have to find a way to go in, to say to the person, to the council, if you're going to make a different motion, please don't make it until everyone has had the chance Point to speak board. twice. Council Mayor, she interrupted me with a privilege uh, motion. I had the floor, now she got the floor. All I want to do is be fair. If I have to make a motion to suspend the room so we can do this, it don't bother me. But that's where our problems come in. When others have to sit and look at others do differently than what they told to do. So let's test it out. I properly had the floor. I would move to suspend the room so we can have a good meeting. Okay. As I said earlier, Point when you make a motion to suspend the rules, you have to identify what it is you make. All so of them so we can meet. Good meeting. What? what rule I are you said, suspending? I said the rules. You can't. Okay, well, I did. Now, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chilly, Mr. Mr. if, 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 if there's no second, if we ain't going to get into this, who said we can't? That's why we got to make rules that don't dig down in the parliamentary procedure. Um, if Miss Coco want to make a rule and you ain't stated it and I withdraw it, all I'm doing is saying I don't want to sit here and be polite to Miss Coco, Kate Fields, and everybody else, but then when I get the floor, the same courtesy is not carried out to me. Maybe it is, but I just don't know it. So all I'm saying is, what can we do to cut this mess out and set and talk and develop rules? Mr. Chair? What? Okay. Ms. Fields. Okay. Number one, I don't know why, once I had pointed out that I had not had my second turn and had been interrupted by another member, you gave someone else the floor. I think I made that clear and there was an understanding that that is what occurred. But now, since it is my time to speak, I wanted to point out the reason I wanted to offer an amendment to this motion is because I was aware that we didn't have enough votes to pass this at a three minute rule. Mm -hmm. And if members would look around and understand that, with what somebody was objecting to, that's why I was willing to compromise, even though I would prefer it to be a three-minute rule twice, I was willing to compromise at a five-minute rule twice for, per topic for the total because I could see that the votes would be there to pass that. Mm -hmm. If not, it wouldn't be passed at all. Mr. Chair, I was next, wasn't I? Mm -hmm. I disagree. Like I said before, if we haven't done our homework, we have our agenda at least 48 hours ahead of time. And if we've got to go beyond three minutes, that's terrible. And that's what's delaying all of our meetings. That's why we don't get home till maybe two or three in the morning. Midnight is normal. And uh, I think when uh, the missing council person comes back in, Coco, I'd love for you to give the rule of what point of order means. It's being misused all the time. Okay, I, I, got done this work, I got a question, Ms. Uh, Coco. Uh, what a motion to suspend the rules does and when is it appropriate or inappropriate? 
a motion to suspend the rule. Yes. Because really what you're aiming for is, I want to quote this correctly. Suspend the rules is not debatable, first of all. Okay. So once a person says, I want to suspend the rules, they shouldn't be talking about why they want to. Okay. So, and the motion must state its specific purpose. So not the rule, but the intention, i.e. Uh, if his intention was, I move to suspend the rules regarding the number of times a person may speak, that should have been the motion. To simply say, I move to suspend the rules would, yes. would suspend everything. You, right. you wouldn't have any way to vote on anything. It wouldn't, would, so you have to identify. So he, if his intention was so that there would be no limitation on the number of times people could speak, that is what should have been the motion. Okay. Ms. Worth. Okay. And it's not, and when, if he comes back and just to make it, remember, it's not debatable. You just vote whether or not you want to do it. Okay. So, <coughs> you said that you wanted to amend your motion. And so, is it proper for me to amend your Oh, motion? absolutely. Okay. So, I make an amendment to the motion. And there would be five minutes two times each with no banking or yielding, yielding of minutes. There's, there's a motion on four or five times no banking or yielding of time. Twice. That's one of I second that motion. And probably second. Any discussion? All custom worthy. Just to recap. Three minutes twice isn't going to pass. I would prefer three minutes twice. But since it's not going to pass, I'm going to do five minutes twice because then we can monitor it, we can time it, we can adhere to it, and that will still save us time. And we can also make another motion that our meeting should not last past 9 p.m., 10 p.m. That's another thing I'm going to bring up later. But also let's let it deal, let's deal with, the, with the amendments on the floor. Right. Remember, right. one of the things we're focusing on is being one germane. Right. So, so we're just now talking about the amendment to strike three and insert five time twi five minutes twice. Limit. Can you add limit to uh, the I, I guess I just need some clarification. I, I don't know what, what the difference is between for that and what you have already, other than adding special orders, etc. But my question is, the, the, when I get confused on keeping track of time because we keep changing it, when you have a speaker, for example, so I didn't, I'm not keeping track now because you're going back right. and forth with Ms. Coco right. and you've all spoken more right. than twice to the question. But, for example, when you have a department head here, it used to be five minutes while they're talking, I got one clock, but now I'm expected to, when they stop talking, stop the clock, start the clock, stop the clock. It's impossible <laughs> for me to keep minutes plus the clock. Absolutely. So does this include... Yes. Guest speaker time yes. as well. Yes. Are they included in that five minutes? So in other words, if I ask a question of Mr. Branch and he answers and he takes yes. up my five minutes, that's it. That's my five minutes. Or do I, am I supposed to stop the clock every time he speaks? This, this current motion is referring only to council members. That, we should deal with that issue, which is an important one, separately. Or we'll have the floor. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. Right, so, so the only problem, Coco, is inside of our five-minute rule now, it has the time that you're speaking to a department here, because many times your five minutes is being used to gather information. Right. And so when you're gathering information, they're talking and you're talking. Yeah. And so it's been unlimited. And so what, what would be the, so what she's saying is a valid point because yes. You're still inside of your five minutes, and so you can't expect somebody to stop and start the time. Either we say, and unfortunately, we talk, and then we bring them in, and then they talk, and then we talk again instead of maybe getting out everything um, that, that we're saying. So are you saying we still need to go with this, and then we'll address the department heads in a second? Yes. Okay. I would say that's a separate issue. Okay. Mr. Chair. I will just next one after this board Ms. Okay. Or after that council. spoken twice. Council creature. Well, anyhow. 
Now, I have seen as many as five points of order in one person speaking. If they're supposed to have five minutes, what happens? Well, remember now they can't be interrupted. The speaker right. can't be? No. No. How about the request for information? No. No. Hmm. Speaker can't be interrupted, so you get your five minutes. And also, that's the limit. That don't mean you use the five. Exactly. Because you might use one minute. And, and I want to tell you, David, that five minutes is Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. So are we ready to call you guys? Yeah. Yes. I mean, okay. We can, okay. Okay. We're Go down. Vote on the amendment first. Yeah. Okay. We've been ready to vote on the amendment from three minutes to five minutes. Two time, no banking of time. Uh, all in favor? Uh, and now the motion as amended. The motion is amended to five minutes. Two time, five minutes, no banking of time. All in favor? Passed. Mr. Chair? No. Okay. I just have a request for a recess or a break. Okay. Okay. You guys, we're well, getting this a, in order. We, we get a break in 45 minutes. We're done with this meeting at 4 o'clock. No, we might as well go. Five, five minute recess. We got four Thank minutes. you. Five minute recess. Five minute recess. Five minute recess. Five minute recess. Thank you. Five minute recess. Five minute recess. Five minute recess. You're welcome. Like it's working, yeah. Well, it's only five. I'm like, I just oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't you like this chicken? Oh, you like chicken? Well, then, why not if you want an hour? No. Okay. Do we have any cold water to be with? No, we cold water. Absolutely. Absolutely. I swear the time is right. Absolutely. So, Coke Water told me that um, we should go through it. Did you look at these? Yes, I am. Yeah, that's what my notes are on. Okay. I want to make um, a motion that um, we can even begin discussion, debate, whatever word they want to use before a motion is on the floor. That's what we're spending a lot of time. And then once we said all this stuff, then we say, uh, I want to make a motion um, to um, pass this. Is there any discussion? Yep. Oh. We just spent an hour and a half talking about it. Before yeah. Sometimes you don't get supposed to two hours on the agenda. Before the agenda. Right. Yes. Um, um, right. Uh, you go home, Aria, and don't think that God ain't going to please. Now listen here, lady. It's not Sunday yet. You get four more days before Sunday comes. Sunday, 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 Sunday school. If you want to go to Sunday school, go to Sunday This is my college. I mean, to get an education from Coco. Again. This is a natural liver business day. I just wanted to let you know that all the rules, mm -hmm. there's like a, uh, a hearing that we have to go through. So we, yes. have to, so we have to merge all of this into, that's why we need to come to closure on all of this. Yes. My single document. Because it can't really go into effect until after we've had a hearing. Absolutely. I mean, we got to follow the rules. Absolutely. You know, we might want to have effect at the next council meeting. It can't be until after the rules, you know, after we publish them. Oh, that's right. We have to publish it yes. in the journal. I mean, you got to follow the law. Absolutely. So, what really should be stated is what do you What we're trying to do now is get everything together. Get the information. So, so, so gather the information. Come to closure, merge it in, and then it becomes a fact. Gotcha. Gotcha. After they all come together, then absolutely, it won't be ready for the next schedule. I got It must be published first. I want to go. Thank you, Miss Brown. Just get it. I said that's in the charter. Well, yes. You might not want to mention until after the so nobody will be upset. They were like, it must be absolutely. It must be published in the hearing and all of that. Yep. Absolutely. One, one item um, that I think you should ask legal counsel about. 
the current 7.3? Rule 7.3? A closed session must be conducted during the course of an open meeting. Yeah. Now, I don't think that that's true. Notice that when they quote the OMA, they say closed session is defined as a meeting or part of a meeting of a public body that is closed to the public. I'm saying this because all over the state, there are councils that say, um, I move that when we adjourn, we adjourn into closed session. So it's after the open meeting. And there are others who have a rule that I move that at the 30 minutes before the next council meeting, we meet in closed session to discuss, because you have to say what the issue Seemingly is. Seemingly what's usually been, what's usually been done here, um, for at least as long as I've been here, is that uh, council will vote to go into a closed session during an open meeting, so at that point, it becomes closed, and then they return to open session once the business. Oh, is taken oh I'm not there. questioning. So they basically, I think, I think the intention is, is that basically the, um, except in like you know, unusual circumstances, the, the fact that there's going to be a closed session or that the closed session is requested is published as part of the proposed agenda. Jim, for the I, I think it's Which, silly by the way, is de that I know for a fact yeah. is definitely not required. I mean, because, because, of it, yeah. no, I, I, because I, you could go, you could be in the clo in an open meeting and suddenly realize you need to go into a closed session, and it's not on the agenda. You can still do it. No, I'm, no the point I'm making is that issue, there are so many communities. For example, I'm thinking of two very large communities that have a lot of press still, which hardly anybody does, mm -hmm. and they go into closed session following the adjournment of the meeting if they know they're not going to come back with a decision so that everybody can go home. And I think it's violating, you say closed session, but you, get, but you give the name of the case. That isn't closed. Oh no, that's required by law. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it's pretty open then, you're saying who's, who's, who's suing who? Well, it's the, it's the specifics, for example, under... I know we don't have the specifics, but just to say their names. I thought it was rather not closed. I didn't remember. There's not a whole lot of circumstances with which we can keep that level of confidentiality confidential. Okay. Um, all right. No, the Open Meetings Act requires. And um, I'm seeing a number of communities that are actually in the motion to go in closed session, not only stating the, the issue for which they're going in, but also saying under, and they actually list the section of the Open Meetings Act that they're going on in under. So if it's clo if it's a, a grievance hearing or if it's a purchase of property or it's that's not technically required, but we generally okay. put generally put on the record yeah. as to at least the general category that we're that we're requesting yeah. under, which yeah. whether it be kind of litigation or employee relations. You, you or are absolutely correct. It's not required. I just am commenting that I'm seeing a lot more of that because I read a lot of minutes of a lot of municipalities. Right. A lot of municipalities, you know. Yeah. Also, don't have full time in house people come to the way that the state does. So. I just had to go eat. I'm a quick here. Chemical and the same thing. We never take only five minutes. We never take only five minutes. We just got five minutes. We went to 315. The whole company, how we talk about it, the world wide. That's what I want to do. The whole company, how we talk about it, the world wide. But these things, we have. And you should watch other people's council meetings because they are in this and that's the time. You know what? We have been in this. We started here and did this. It's doing great. Well, anyhow, so how did you know that? What are you studying? So how's the new school year? I only live in Berkeley. How's the new school year? Oh, good. Yeah. 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 Uh, there they have. Is he online too? Or are you not? Yeah. Is this, is yeah. that going? And I was going over our charter with him. He said, well, your major partner is, your mm -hmm. charter is mayor's strong charter. And it's called the council strong charter. Yeah. Yeah. No wonder I doubts about it. That's true. And, uh, regular, but the other thing, the way they avoid so they're these really long, some of them are both speaking. Too loud. Because it may be so Well, the way they avoid that, they're even just getting the right now. And I'm going to have to explain that. Well, now, but you watch the meetings of the city of Detroit. Watch their council meetings. They are handling 
big, big body. Yeah. What's bigger than me? But he has a huge teeth, so. Also, don't forget that the chair has the authority to rule that some of these comments are, are not germane. Absolutely. So if somebody is essentially, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's obviously you want to be respectful of the member's right to speak on the subject. Absolutely. But if the member is clearly speaking in a way that is not relevant to the topic of motion on the floor, that would be an appropriate time for them to be. You got an industry for 25 years in industry. So we didn't need all the because the board of directors did. Well, that's because if you're in industry, you have a chain of command. Uh, you have a chain of command. Even in a committee, you still have a chain of command. Well, we had the whole chain of meeting, too. Right. Right. Not enough Six people in there, but now. A lot of them are back now, right? I quit. I think you hear that. It took me an hour back four years ago. But I'm saying overall. I think the big problem with our base is Maurice, we have an industry who we aren't really that diverse in who we're just doing it. Clean. Mm -hmm. clean. And everybody has the same, uh, I should, I should you know, technical background. All right. I'll do that. Oh, God. Yeah. That helps. Yeah. Yes, I yes, that's so why we get the main one. Just don't come to conclusions. Right. Yes. Once we get back, I would like to ask a question of the proletariat. Okay, right. Okay, okay, we back in order. Thank you. So, I would like to make a motion that to be um, sent to the council to be voted on and adopted immediately. That unless there is a motion on the floor, no discussion and or debate about that resolution, um, appointment, um, ordinance, cannot happen. I hope that makes sense. If I need to clarify it, I will. Do you understand, Mr. Chair? Kind of sort of comes along uh, I second that motion. It's been moved properly. Second. second. Any discussion? Always. Yes. Go ahead, Ms. I, I certainly approve that motion because that also limits the, um, it keeps the conversation directed on an actual piece of business. Yeah. And so the piece of business has, the motion has to be made for 
that to actually occur before the dialogue starts. And I guess I should ask, um, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, 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 no I had, I had first, no. I guess I should have asked um, through you, Mr. Chair, to the parliamentarian, is that an acceptable motion and the reason why is because many times we'll have a um, resolution or an appointment um, or something other and we just start talking about it for an hour sometimes mm -hmm. and then finally a motion is made and seconded and then whoever the chair is says is there any discussion and there still is discussion and so there's a lot of pre-talking about the item that we really should be disposing of within the context of a, a motion, and so that's why I don't know if that's it. well fits in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let's go to page 34 if you have your book. That's okay. Because what you're suggesting, Councilwoman, is exactly what Robert's rules would say. Under parliamentary procedure, strictly speaking, Discussion of any subject is permitted only with reference to a pending motion. When necessary, a motion can be prefaced by a few words of explanation, which must not come before a speech, or a member can first request information, or he can indicate briefly what he wishes to propose and can ask the chair to assist him in wording an appropriate motion. In general, however, when a member has obtained the floor while no motion is pending, Unless it is for a special purchase, such as to, purpose, such as to ask a question, he makes a motion immediately. One of the this is not unusual, and so people will say, "Well, what are we going to do if we have a subject that we want to discuss, and we don't have a motion and yet or a resolution?" It is perfectly appropriate to say, "I move that we discuss." Um, uh, construction on Elm Street. Um, second, no discussion. Then we simply vote. Do we wish to discuss it? And if by majority vote the group wishes to discuss it, then you go ahead. So you have not you, you have had a motion on the floor to permit discussion. It's been adopted by a majority vote, so then you can go ahead and have the discussion. So this does not, just because some people may say, well, if we have this, that means we can never talk about anything. No, no. It means that you have to have a majority. I, and well, I, we still have the five-minute rules on that. It doesn't change anything. It just, just gives you another vehicle to have not a lot of talk before something happens. And I would suggest, watching your meetings, that that would not necessarily include the uh, when you have somebody who gives a report and then you ask some questions, that would be all right. And then you have the motion right away. I would say I would still think this should be in our rules because I know in discussions of Robert's rules there's a lot of interpretation mm -hmm. yes. that is different from one than the other. So I think it's important that that rule is actually in council rules. Mm -hmm. So I, this is my second time speaking, I strongly advocate that we pass this motion. Any other discussion? <coughs> well, we have a motion. Let's state the motion. Yeah. Oh, that um, before there can be any discussion and or debate on resolutions, um, <coughs> appointments, or ordinances, that a motion must be made. Oh, okay. Okay, as stated, all in favor? Show of hands. Aye. Okay, that passes. Now I would like to say this. Uh, I would like to turn uh, attention over to uh, Clerk Ms. Brown because what we're doing today, we're saying what we're moving to council for Monday, but it takes time to get published in the hearing. Ms. Brown, could you put clarity to the publishing in the hearing how long it, how the procedure after we kind of move stuff to council, it don't go immediately because this is just prepared. This is what we're doing today. According to what I remember from the past charters, yes. 
what we have to do is publish so that there's a public hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, according to Ms. Fields, there isn't anything in the new charter mm -hmm. that says that, but I'm going to go back to it because okay. I don't want to be in violation of the charter. Okay. And I'm not trying to put additional Absolutely. problems on the council. I just want to be sure that we're following right, right, everything right. precisely. Thank you, Ms. Okay. Brown. Sure. The council will be I looked through this quickly. I don't see that anywhere in this charter. It says it has to publish before it becomes a rule. So I understand Ms. Brown wants to check because she's very thorough, very precise. I appreciate that as we all do. Okay, but I would say before Monday's meeting, yes. she has to let us know because if it's okay. not in the new charter, okay. then we can go ahead and vote on these on the so. Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, 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 we are 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 Ms. Brown, do you know that William White died from my foundation? That I just got that. Oh, wow. Um, I'm so sorry. Anyway, we got a nice bus in the corner. That's nice. That's how it goes. Oh, wow. Thank you. 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 Thank yeah. Okay, we, we've already voted on yes. that last question. Yes. Okay, now I would like to discuss and see if the parliamentarian can help us. We were talking about what happens when we have a department head and we're asking that there's no motion on the floor and we're asking the department head questions. How do we handle that to encompass a time limit and a back and forth and for our recording secretary, Ms. Donahue? Yeah. We're now in discussion about how we handle that when there's dialogue with the okay. department head. What what is your suggestion? Thank you, Ms. Cope. My suggestion would be this: the council person would ask the department head all the exhaustive quest all the exhaustive questions to the department head. You got your limit of five minutes, have a conversation, and then the, let the department head uh, respond because they're not on the I five minute clock because they are a department head giving important information. That would be a suggestion of mine. You, you inquire of them, and I know I'm limited to my limit of five minutes, so I'm gonna ask all the pertinent questions I want, and then they should be able to respond. That's what I suggest, and, and then until my next five minutes come around. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I hate to sound like a broken record, but a lot of times when department heads respond, we get information new information, so forth and so on. That's where the, these rules become problematic. Um, I'm just here to tell you, I've watched this council for over 30 years. I've watched the council for over 30 years, and you know, the nature of this business, it's just problematic. When you got department heads and people giving technical information and we are the decision makers and government and body, you know, I would hate to be asking somebody something out of a $12 million contract that they say we was the lowest bidder on and then can't find out who made the decisions, is it going to be rebid? It's just the nature of this business that all of these men and groups hampers good government. I'm more concerned with good government and time. There's plenty of ways to get around time. A good chairperson, a fair chairperson, a person looking for good government. <coughs> At the end of the day, when we hear what rules is proposed and then we'll put rules before the majority. I encourage people to look at them close and work at them at home, at home and then we move forward. I'm so thankful you convened this rules committee meeting, but I'm going to be determined to get us out of this way, uh, bogging down of time. We don't get elected not to do good government 
and uh, time is key and it can be a factor, but it's a way I think to do it and we've got to figure that out. I think I know it and so I look forward to the final draft. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I'm taking myself out the equation, Mr. Chair, so people can't blame interference and people's ideas can flow. But I'll be looking at the final draft and then we'll have enough time for public hearings and others to try to develop some rules where we take care of this. The only trouble I see with what was previously discussed is that sometimes you have to ask a couple of questions of the department head in order to know what you want to discuss. And I'll, I'll give you an example. If we say to the finance chair, what's the current status of our water collections mm -hmm. rate? Okay. That isn't the end of what you want to ask, but you have to give okay. the department head a chance to respond. Now, what the problem is, is the recording secretary is saying that she can't start and stop when we speak and when we don't. But in order to then know what next to ask, for an example, the finance director, I need an answer to that, and then I can continue speaking. But sometimes, you can't just use your five minutes because you don't know what the answers to the questions are that you want to ask. But. Um, I got you, Councilman. But in the conversation and discussion, I reckon only lasts three minutes, a whole 45. But what I'm trying to say is this you had a dialogue, but something, and then you got to remember, you got another five minutes coming. So you got a dialogue with the department here back and forth, but when you see the time is running out, you leave them so they can answer the, the last of the question. Uh, Ms. Worth, Councilwoman Worth. I have my own thoughts on this, but before I state that, can, can we please hear from the parliamentarian on mm -hmm. her thoughts? Well, I, I'm really not familiar with this part of the meeting being timed. So I'm interested in your participation because usually this part, when you're discussing it with the time uh, department head, and when they were presenting a report, would just be open. So, uh, so it might be that um, one council member would ask a question, and then another council member would ask a question on the same department head, and then that would spur somebody else to think, yes. you know. So I see this as more an open dialogue and not timed at all. Uh, I. I don't see, as I watch your meetings, I don't see this area of the meeting as being an issue. This area of the meeting seems to move along quite well, and you do get in good information from the department heads when they're there. But I, I think one of the issues is always, as we talk about attitude, is demeanor toward the department heads. Yes. I mean, I think I, I'm always uncomfortable when I don't hear everyone being referred to by name or title. In other words, if we're talking to uh, an example, if we're talking to the DPW director, you're calling him or her Joe, mm -hmm. and yet they're expected to call you council member. I find that to be a bit uncomfortable. So I think you ought to, as long as we're going to not say names mm -hmm. of each other, let's also refer to people who work for the city or who are coming before us as peers by their title or at least Mr. or Mrs. No, I was still um, I was still talking. She asked me a question and I didn't have an answer support. So um there's no motion on the board. No. So I would like to make a motion that um Oh there is a motion on the floor. There is? Unless there is a motion. Oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did you vote on that? Unless there is a motion. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, that questions and answers for department heads is open ended as we have already done. However, there is no debate or comment, only questions asked. So a lot of so here's what I'm seeing the problem, and maybe she uh, mm -hmm. help me, um, is a question's asked and then someone goes on ten minutes about the answer to the question instead of asking another question. These should be times for questions, and then if you have a diatribe or debate, mm -hmm. use your five minutes. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> but
But that should come after all the questioning of the after department is finished. So now everyone's had a turn to ask questions of the department yes. head. Now comes yes. the debate okay. among the council members. Yes. Yes. So did, are you making a motion? Yes, or? that um, no, no, I did. I, I mean, I oh, did. I, 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 yeah, I, yeah. mm -hmm. I see. Um, I, I made a motion that we do not time question and answers for department heads, um, but that there is no debate during that time. There's a motion on the floor not to time department heads, uh, minus no debate, no debating whatsoever, but information from department heads. Is there a second to motion? Okay. It's been second. Now, um, you just save me until you can start under this, because I don't have a... Okay, okay. Councilman, um, yeah. oh, maybe just in the interest of trying to streamline things, uh, you may not want to risk because there are times when you have members of the public that, that are that are being called on to be question or something. You might just be setting up something to you know refer to this as, as questioning or hearings or something, and Point not order. not related to a motion. Point of order. Point. In a council meeting, do department heads and others just get the right to stand up and communicate and interrupt? what we're doing, or should they be called on as well, that concerns me. They should be called on. Is that inside the motion? You know, as information. I'm going to that with a point of order if I okay. can continue with oh, discussion continue. on the motion. Continue. Or continue. get started. I was yeah. Continue. Um, I don't mind input from the department heads such mm -hmm. as that, but normally, when we have resolutions come before us, they come in because they've already been brought by the administration. And what our job is, is to try to decide what we want to do with as individuals. So, all Excuse of the me. roots. Were you finished? Well, I made the motion that was seconded, and now we were in discussion. Discussion. Okay. Yeah, I knew that. We knew that. Well, it's just that you started with a point of order, so I wanted to make sure. I did a point of order when he just stood up and started speaking. Is that the ruling violation or what? Continue. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Now I got to figure out <laughs> where I was at. But see, that's what's going to happen. That's why I say we're going through some things, and it ain't, you know, it ain't the same. It, I value what folks say, and I try to listen. But, you know, I think we've got to really do that in order to put this thing on. Right. Department heads talking, I agree. You want to get as much information as you can. And we don't know how long that'll go between council persons. I agree you should be able to communicate. I believe a good chair can help facilitate that. That's where the ball game is at, a good chair facilitating that. Some don't believe that, but that's really where the ball game is at on how we treat each other and what's facilitated by the chair. I remember as our chair, you had people, points of information, points of order, you had people um, appealing, and then it's just a different value system. Absolutely. And so I don't know if we're going to ever overcome that. That's why I'm kind of relaxed on these rules and changes. But I'm going to look at them, and I'm going to put my best foot forward. When a department head comes, particularly a chief of police or finance director, remember, we had we had somebody we had a situation where we voted as a body to be able to ask questions of department heads and it changed the complexion of the council because certain members didn't want to allow for questions of department heads. They just want us to sit and listen to department heads, whether we understood what they were saying or not. I guess we could write notes and wait to the end, but I don't think the department heads know. We're trying to make a decision based upon information and really, you know, I want it to continue that way. And when we get in discussion, I think what people is missing 
as much as people rely on Robert's rules, I've heard today for the first time, and you was up on it, you say it was 10 minutes and 10. And that's under Robert's rules. I've heard that today. And if I'm mistaken on what I heard, then correct me, but I thought I heard that. 10 minutes and 2. Oh, 10 minutes and 2 for a total of 12. I thought it was 10 and 10. Like I said, I thought I heard oh, that. I, I'm sorry, it's 10 minutes twice. Yes, that's what I thought I heard. And so that's what I was saying. So it's kind of contradictory that we're trying to do business and we rely relying so much on a parliamentarian and Robert Drew, but then on the other hand, we ignore them on certain key points in order to take care of multi-million dollar business and affect policy and enact law and legislation. Our, and our goal in the work we do is so valuable to the community. What would have happened if we had to question the $12 million lowest bidder thing? Please. How soon could we have found that out easier? But I just continue to listen because I don't want to bore nobody, but I'm going to not give up my seat to chime in, and I'm not going to humor nobody. But it's just a different cultural difference as it relates to developing roots. The majority will win the culture. But everybody should be treated fairly under whatever roots we uh, Ms. Field and Mr. Briggs. I'd like to call the question. Well, there's a, you need a second? There's a second. This is the motion for the previous question. Right, right. No, no. Yeah, right. Call the questions on the floor there, sir. It's been, okay, it's been probably second, so. The motion was. Okay, this is call don't call a question. This vote don't call a question. Don't call question. Okay, well, here we go. Call in favor, call in question. All nine in favor. It fails for lack of good. Now, I want to point out this gives me an opportunity. Somebody was saying at the meeting that the only motion that requires two-thirds was reconsider. That, that is true. absolutely not true. Oh, oh, it was oh, somebody had moved to do something else and it was needed a six-to-one vote and there was great disagreement on that. So be sure that you look in the column where it says vote and right. note that right. there are several motions that require two-thirds. And this, uh, the motion to call the previous question is one of them. So not only did it fail because it was a tie vote and tie vote twos, it also failed because it was not two thirds. So I just wanted that gave me I meant to I had made a note of watching the meeting to be point out to you that there are other motions that require two thirds besides reconsider. And another one is um, suspending the rules. Third. So that also takes two thirds. So just be, this is a good piece of paper. Yes, just it is. You, if you know your columns, you can use it quite quickly. So I just wanted to point out Thank that you. you are correct. That motion failed for because it was a tie, but it also did not have two thirds. Okay. Uh, no, it's my turn. Oh, Mr. Greaves. Okay, more than five minutes before the call the question was started, or was done. Well, started it was a point of order. So I'd love it if Ms. Coco would reinforce the definition of point of order. Thank you. It's a very it's a very um, short short let yeah, me but, but is it and Coco this is a learning process. Yeah. I know that that's gonna be very um quick, 
but is it relevant to the motion that's on the floor? Well, we were that's what I'm asking about. I, I we have a motion on the floor. Uh, you know what? Of you forgot. Course. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you, Council Member, because it was the motion for previous question, and it failed. So it is appropriate to continue to the debate. Right. And I will answer your question after we vote on this motion. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we're in the middle of we're in the middle of the motion. Mm -hmm. Okay, who made that motion? Need to restate it. Was it Eva? Mm -hmm. Eva. Yeah. Okay, restate the motion. That um, there's no timing during question and answer, but actually, um, can I amend that? I'd like to amend it. What would you like? As per the city attorney said, in non. Um, oh gosh, what did you say? <laughs> Can I, I ask? You might, not want to, you might not want to specify department heads since you're having, it, there may be non department heads, other yes. employees, or even you know, members of the mm -hmm. public, contractors that would. So, so speakers. Speak, limiting it to I, department heads seemed. Yes, so speakers instead of department heads. Uh, that it's not timed, but no debate is allowed, just questions. Until no debate allowed until the motion is made. Okay, as stated, oh, it's been made properly. It been a second. I second. Second by Ms. Bill. Any discussion? Yeah. Uh, Cost made. Um, that leads me to wonder after the oh, department here. This question. Mm -hmm. You know, when it's a lot being said about when we make a motion to go into debate, and it'll raise up again here. We listen to department heads, they discuss and answer questions, they get done. We try to discuss among ourselves and people looking for immediate motions because. That's what they want to do, limit that discussion in time. I guarantee you it'll come up a debate on the department head is finished and should there be an immediate motion before we even discuss anything. That's a, we shouldn't have to talk through our motions and then go through that exercise in all cases. So I'm concerned about that and, um, you know, this particular rule, maybe I'll accept, but you better piggyback on what happens after that department head stops, and Absolutely. then it turns Absolutely. back over to us because that can come up numerous times. As um, and it ain't nowhere in our rules about immediate motions and so forth and so on. You get my drift? I got you. Councilwoman, one word. Um. Well, usually we ask these questions and then we can have debate. I point of order. Ain't this her third time? No. Yeah, she, she was going to amend it. She amended. She was going to amend it. That was her second time. She made the motion. And then she was going to amend it. This is her third time. No, actually, it's her first time on the amended. Was it, it amended? Starts, mm -hmm. It starts over again. Oh, okay. I didn't realize it was amended. I thought she was just restating it. And once she restated oh, the amendment had to do with the other. She asked permission to an amendment. Um, here's how I see this working. Um, and again, as Coco stated, we do this really well. We ask our questions. So I don't foresee this being a huge problem, but just in case. Um, once we're done asking questions and we start debate, a motion is made. I don't see anything prohibiting us from continuing to ask questions, but just now it would be timed within five minutes and five minutes. So I, at that point, I've done it before. I've asked questions because I needed clarity once mm -hmm. a debate has started. And I still haven't used my full five minutes even asking more questions. So I don't think, in my opinion, that that would be a, a huge problem. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, I think you missed the point. The rule that I'm looking at has to do with when a motion is made. I don't want people to assume when motion is made. Because even though we discussed in a resolution um, form, some folks say when we 
get the resolutions motions have been made. But when a department head speak or in any of these areas that they trying to limit for debate, that's only after a motion is made. So I'll see when we get to that part. It's relevant for me voting on this motion. And so I'll see what I do. I might not even vote on this motion, but that's going to be something, Mr. Chair, that I hope you can make a note of because it, that's going to be a, a good thing. Councilman Gallup. So, um, Councilman Mays, I don't know if he was in here, but we made a motion. We made um, a motion that there could be no debate or discussion on a resolution, on an appointment, on an ordinance before a motion is made. So that has already been made and passed. And so now we're here as a piggyback or as a um, subsequent right. response to that. And so that's how we end up here. So, all right. All right, well, it's been stated. Y'all ready to vote on? All in favor? By showing the hands. So it passes. Mr. Uh, Chairman. Any opposes? One opposed. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Um, Through you to um, Coco. Coco, can you, um, and I think I don't know if Alan and I had the same thing, I wrote mine down, but um, Council, can you. Point information. Oh. Councilman Briggs. Oh. We don't use personal names. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, but can you um, give, define and give an example of a proper point of order for, and request for information? Okay. Point of order. When a member thinks that the rules of the assembly are being violated. What the page rules? Page um, 247. Okay. The rules of the assembly. That is key because I see you doing some points of order when you think somebody said something that's not correct. That's not a point of order. That's if you, it's when a rule, a good example of a proper point of order was the one that Council Member Mays just made when he thought that the Council Member was speaking a third time since he knows the rules twice. That would have been a proper point of order. A point of order, if somebody says something in the discussion and you don't agree, that is not a point of order. You have to wait until your turn comes and then debate the issue. So that's, and it's not debatable. So once you say point of order, that person is speaking again, the chair resolves it, and it's gone. There's so no debate on point of order. And a uh, point of request for information, and I'm gonna really hope that you get so you <coughs> say that that word's gonna just roll right off your tongue. A request for information is, uh, there's an issue on the floor, uh, request for information to the chair, and state your request, uh, what is the budget for this item? A request for information must always be a question to the chair. And the chair may then direct it to the finance director or to anyone. But a request for information is always a question, and it, it can never be. The reason they right, changed right, it right. from so, point so of information I mean, to request is twofold. One, so people I mean, thought they were giving so information, so they were making a point, point of information. That's not what was intended. And the second thing is, particularly in large conventions, people were using it to interrupt and use it for debate. They would say, point of information, isn't it true that if we do this, then that'll happen? That is not a point of information. That is debate. So a request for information is specifically a question that seeks information. And so, um, Coco, it seems like one of those um, could not interrupt the speaker. The speaker could say yes or no whether, is that one of those? Well, that's actually, uh, that is definitely one. If you are currently speaking, and there's a request for information during your five minutes, the chair has to ask you, do you wish to be interrupted? So on a request for information, the chair must ask the speaker if they are willing to yield the floor. Right. So and, and note that I didn't use the word 
yield. I use the word be interrupted because sometimes people think when you yield, you're not giving up your time. Okay. But if you request, if you accept being interrupted, that's on, on your, now that we know it's five minutes, that's on your nickel. Okay. Um, and, and so it's not proper for um, me to hear one of my colleagues and then um, kind of, like if I hear a colleague say, and I say, okay, isn't it true? Or um, that didn't happen. Did you know that? Yeah, that's not my Okay, so it needs to be a request for information pertaining to what we're talking about. And I think an example you used is my colleague makes a motion that we paint the um, benches yellow. There's a approval. And then I say, and then another one say, I'd like to, that we paint the benches purple. And I say, request for information, how much more would the cost be? So it has to be relevant in that manner. And, is that correct? And the chair could have asked the speaker, do you wish to be interrupted? Hmm. And the speaker might say, no, I haven't finished my point. Yeah. Especially since you're going to be careful about the timing now. Right. It's more important that people not interrupt each other. Right. And, and Coco, is, does this sheet, which, how, how do you know on this sheet which ones require the speaker to be asked if, if it can be? It's only request for information. Only a request for information. Okay. Because a point of, remember, a point of order is really fast. So that's why it's not an issue. A point of order relates to the rules. So it's it's either a yes or a no. I take I think that, that's all right. That's all right. No, yeah, it doesn't. And just for the record, yes. it doesn't. Because what I want to, the residents of this community that are watching by video to learn as we're learning. And so mute to you is not mute to me. I'm just asking for the same respect that I've given everybody here on today. And so um, is it proper for me, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair DeCoco, to, to make a motion to go to council just like we are doing for the other ones that in our rules it now reflect that a request for information must be asked, that the speaker must ask if they are willing to allow. When a, request, when a request for information interrupts a speaker, yes, that's the key. Mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm, wait, wait, wait. I'm violating this, but I'm frustrated because we just passed a motion to send to council that says for a point of information, a request for information in a parliamentary inquiry, no one can interrupt a member who has been given the floor. That's a we already passed that. That ain't no. That's not a point of order. Yes, it is. No, for no. me, it is. It's a point of order. No, it's not. She out of order. The, the no, rules no. don't allow no, for her to go through a long diatribe to get the flow with a privileged motion. She, That's she, my point. She asked a question. A privileged motion. She asked it was wrong. You just said it was a short inquiry. That makes sense. That was not a short inquiry. She read the motion that was previously adopted and asked if this was a conflict. And she got the floor by high. That was a good that was a good problem. Okay, who got the floor? Before we go any further, we need to schedule another meeting with Miss Coco before we leave this meeting because it's already way after four o'clock and it was slow. So we must schedule another meeting, you know, before we, we recess or Mr. Good. Yes, sir. Yeah, I made sure I left out so people could do stuff on in the road. Yes. You yes. come in here and that quick is controversy when you try to get the flow two, three times. But my point is this. She knew that you was finna give you the flow. Because she was trying to get it diligently and then she used that point of information to get the flow. Okay. I don't have to do no appeal or the room in that okay. chair. I don't care what nobody said. My position is this point of order. Since council hasn't passed this, Mr. Davis, you know that I have asked to be next to speak I after would. Ms. Galloway. Well, I you know Mr. that. I had Councilman Mays and then your name, Ms. No, Ford. it wasn't Councilman Mays first. It was, it was me first. Right. It was me. 
Then you know, then there's no body line. If you ruling that I can proceed, they ain't appealing your ruling. So let me proceed, if I may. I mean, if she want to monopolize, this is crazy. My point is this. If they pass, because it ain't no motion on the floor right now, is if they pass the motion to deal with immediate motion, We'll discuss that more, and I ain't gonna be laughing like some. It's just something that I'll mm -hmm. see when we get there. This is the, the demeanor and the atmosphere mm -hmm. is the same. At this tape, I'm listening to it. My position is this. In the vein that y'all was asking questions, let's clear this one up if we may. When somebody says a point of order, talking should cease immediately. And not only should it cease immediately from members, it should cease immediately from the chair. And all should happen is the chair saying, what's your point of order? Our rules is clear. When any member is out of order, including the chair, for not recognizing a point of order and debating it and arguing, that's from what we got literally wrote is grounds for removal from that meeting because they are repeatedly out of order. Clear up in folks' mind. What should happen when somebody says clearly point of order? The chair should say state your point, which is currently mm -hmm. what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And the person who made the point, uh, gets to say very quickly what they want. You're saying debating and arguing. That is not allowed. A That's point correct. of order is not debatable. After the chair rules, then the chair will rule, then the options are to sit quietly or to appeal the decision of the chair. Did, Those are the only did two. Did you answer? And the appeal is not appealable, and you cannot do a point of order on an appeal. Did you answer the question that if a chair don't say what's your point in debate, is they out of order? That was one of the specific questions. When a point of order is sounded from a member properly seated, all debate should stop, and the chair should say, what's your point? If the chair start debating whether it is a point or whether you can do it, I'm saying they're out of order. So I want you to do what they're doing here, clarify, and I think you did. I, no, I did not. Okay, well, let's to try to clarify. clarify. Because the point was, a member had made a parliamentary inquiry and in order to get the answer to that, needed to read a previous motion and ask the maker of the current motion if that was in conflict. That was a perfect parliamentary inquiry. Unfortunately, in the middle of that, because you hadn't been here for that part of the meeting, you did a point of order on top of a parliamentary inquiry, causing the commotion that we did not know then who who was up next. Mm -hmm. So if you if you should have Forget not, blaming me. When the sorry, point sorry. of order was sounded, what should have happened? Should people cease and should the chair say, what's your point? Or because it was a parliamentary inquiry, should that be chaos when you hear point of order? It's no, a simple no, question. No, the parliamentary inquiry should have been responded to first. If somebody says point of order in the middle of that, then what you're saying, the chair don't have to say, what's your point? The chair should say, the parliamentary inquiry is being answered You are. Your point of order will be taken next. So a point of order ain't so, always to cease and ask what's no, your point. It okay. can change. For That's example, what I'm hearing. For example, if it was in the middle of a request for information, the request for information could be answered. I'm not asking about a request for information. I'm asking about I'm talking a about the point order. of order, and you're confusing me, because in one point you're saying, Whenever you say point of order, talk and cease, and the chair say, what's your point of order? In another vein, you say they should continue with the parliamentary inquiry and not recognize a point. That's confusing. I said it would come next. I did not say it would I understand you said it would come next, but now, so we got a rule called the point of order that don't always stop. 
one of the things that we discussed no, is the fact sure that if it seems if it's all seems like it's all That's terribly right. confusing and not people aren't sure what's doing next, you're probably not doing something correct. And we can make our rules to say what a point of order do and then what it don't, because our rules supersede. Ain't nothing I read says that you continue with business, whether it's a parliamentary inquiry or not. Cease. And so you cease talk. That's our rules. And so that's where problems come in at, because when you say point of order, you got chairs arguing whether stuff should cease, and they're not saying, what's your point? So until we clear some of that up, that's the problem. So, okay. Part of the problem here is because people, members, say point of order, and it's not necessarily a breach of the rules, which was the whole point other members were trying to clarify with our parliamentarian. I would like to make a motion that in our rules, in order to call a point of order, you must state the specific rule and number of the rule that has been broken or breached if you call a point of order. Otherwise, it's an abuse a point of order. Call for No, you there's a motion. Oh, there's a motion. Uh, there's a motion on the floor about point of order, and you must state the breach. Uh, Councilman Moore. Uh, I second that. Okay, it's been stated and probably second any discussion. Mr. Chair, Councilman. Mr. Chair, the problem don't come in on that when a person we gonna all sit around the table know it's a breach. And it ain't a quick thing because then folks will be getting books out and looking for specific numbers and rules. We know in plain language that if somebody is discussing something that ain't supposed to be, we know what the point of order is. I don't want to get bogged down in that specific because now you're taking up more time looking for a rule. We smart enough to know, in my opinion, that um, verbally, what our rules say or don't say. Now that's why I say it's, it's best to have good generic rules because that's where we get bogged down at. Notice nobody from COCO with parliamentary procedure books to us with simple rules. People's brain just don't remember. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to search for here is a way to keep moving fast and smooth and be fair and take care of business. We going down the same path we went down when the rules was last changed, and I see heavy um, certain things <laughs> being said and done for certain reasons. I'm going to work through whatever rules is presented. I won't be voting yes on this one because I think you can say point of order. We're not on agenda change. we own on um, um, resolutions. And I don't have to state what specific rule, but if we don't get that complicated, let's see who gets up to speed fast. I have no problem working under any rules. I just want them applied fairly and equitably. Okay. Uh, Ms. Worth. Okay. Uh, what well, I, I agree with this because um, it is very clear that we don't know what an actual point of order is, um, as Coco has pointed out many times already in this short meeting. Uh, so if we are going to call a point of order, those of us who want to call it will research and really know the rules. We can say we know the rules all we want, but if we can't point to it, we can't find the page, we can't uh, state the rule, um, then maybe we don't know the rule and we're just making it up as we go. So I'm in agreement with this, even though it will cause more problems for me, because now I'm really going to have to write them down, right? <laughs> have a list ready. But I'm willing to do that so that our meetings are not chaotic, uh, that there are less disagreements on what is a point of order and what is not. Ms. Fields. This rule is the opposite of bogging down the meeting. It's the point of orders that are thrown out that, and point of information, which is no request for information, that interrupt everybody, that make it start over and over again and lead to appeals and lead to crazy stuff that actually bogs us down. If you know that if you're going to call a point of order, you have to literally point to the rule number and read the rule to say this rule is being broken. 
I think that makes it really clear to the entire body whether there is an actual rule being broken or whether someone is just attempting to uh, control the conversation and keep people from saying things they don't like. Well, let me, okay, Council. Let me show you a conflict what's causing all this chaos. And our Council Rules 25 and 3 say, a point of order does not need a second, can and, and interrupt a speaker, and it, it was not debatable, and here go the conflict, and it was decided by the chair. Point of order is decided, that's in our rule 25.3, but then when you go down to 25.4, a point of order cannot be ignored. It's a conflict there. The chair got a chance to decide, or either, like Councilman May said, down here at 24 and 5 and say, all talking may, must cease, and uh, you, you must adhere to the point of order. What's your point of order? But I could ignore it up here at, at 25 and 3. So we got to put that on one accord. Request for information. Is the council member suggesting that he would support that rule if these conflicting rules were changed to be in agreement with the motion? Well, it would have to be changed to, to remove the conflict. And I have to say that that really wasn't a request for information. Right. No, that was debate. That was the okay. Okay. So um, I, I, I just want to say, even in Coco's example of um, the point of order, not overshadowing the other parliamentarian was clear to me and yet here we go with the simplicity is if there is a point of information or request for information on the floor and someone does a point of information it doesn't cause there to be a ceasing this one needs to be addressed first and then we go right to the next one. Is that what I heard you? That's what I'm thinking. Okay. I'm thinking that that would work for you. Okay, and the reason why that's, that's, and I'm, right, but, but that's why we're here today. We're here today doing new rules, not these rules. We and I know that these rules don't work, and the way that it's being stated today, Coco will correct this, well, the conflict, right? You know, we do need to look at it, because the one before the, on the chair read, a point of order should not be used for minor infractions. So we haven't been adhering to that either. So, you know, we have to, thank you, we have to go through okay. and decide point what, what exactly we're going to do. <laughs> point of information yes. request for, was Ms. Fields wrong for a minor violation? It was mine. Of the, your interruption? And when she did a point of information and you told her that wasn't really one, was that something we shouldn't call a point of order on? Was it minor? That was very minor. Okay, so just let it happen. And so everybody didn't know. In a everybody teaching didn't. training situation. Just saying everybody. In a teaching this training. This ain't training. This happens in real life. I am just was asking that. I, well, then, did you call, did you say I could? You, or, you, were, you did a point did a request point for information. information. Yeah. Right, okay. And so with that, I'm, I'm comfortable with um, the, the point of order. I, too, agree that um, if you know that you must know the violation, and, and I think the days of us, you know, trying to find it for somebody is over. We should know if we call it out that it is a violation. And I will say that I'm comfortable with it because, especially hearing what Coco is saying, sometimes a point of order is used to silence the point of information that's on the floor and that's not fair either especially because both of them require that all talking cease and they both carry the same results of the ability to be removed from the meeting and so um i don't have a problem with this and again this is gonna mm -hmm. um rewrite those two that mm -hmm. are in clear clearly in conflict mr Great. okay uh, two things. One, if Ms. Coco would again go over the definition of point of order, and I don't know if, if this is germane or not, but I'd like to understand better what yield means. If you get the yield forward on the other question, do you get it back? If you, I, and again, I use the word interrupt. Mm -hmm. If you, if someone calls for a request for information, during the time you are speaking, so it interrupts you, the chair should say to the person who is speaking, will you accept this interruption? 
And if you say yes, the time for the request for information is counted against your five minutes. So that's why that becomes an issue. If there's no, if no one's speaking, a request for information or it is just simply that, and it, it stops whatever was going to happen, and you pause and you get the request for information. So we try not to use the word yield because that assumes that you are giving up the floor and raises the exact point you made, which do you get the floor back? Well, in the political process, when a person yields the floor, they actually give it to another person and they don't get it back, which is why I'm using the word interrupt. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Every point that's raised that I'm raising to me is valid, and you are 100% right. If you know our rules, it couldn't be ignored. Talk and cease, and when chairpersons even debate, they're out of order, they should remove themselves. <laughs> that ain't their job. Their job was to recognize it, talk and cease. Now, if Coco says that you can do a point of order on the rules... It's only... Coco, let me finish. Okay on the rules, then if our rule says you can't use a point of information in order to obtain the floor like she did, we can do a point of order after we hear what her request for information was and before somebody answered and get into that back and forth, you say point of order. That's not really a, 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 a proper point of information. What I thought I heard Coco saying, and I don't want people to get, a, get it confused, when they say in point of information, before you hear they request, you can't just holler out point of order, because you don't even know what it is yet. Now, I can understand that, but once you hear it, if it's what's heard and it's a violation of the rules, my interpretation is you can do a point of order and say that's not a proper um, request for information. Even, so, you know, I think you got to really read between the lines on what's being said here. You got to be confident in the rules that you put in place in the antenna. Those rules were intended very clearly as to what we do when a point of order come up. Now, if, 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 if somebody says point of information and you say, what's your point? And somebody holler out point of order and they ain't stated their point of information or request. Then I can see you saying, okay, I'm going to get to your point of order, let's hear that request. But if it turns into what she did or somebody does and it's improper, then you say your point of order is correct, that's not a proper point. You usually get the floor. So I just don't buy into um, people understanding when they saying you can't interrupt with a point of order. A point of order is always in order, but I can understand you let them continue with the privilege motion of asking the question, but when you hear it, then you can say, okay, is that your point of order? Because if you don't rule right, I can just still come right back and say, did you point of order? And I ain't even supposed to say, did you hear that? Everything should stop, and you say, what's your point? That, that's not a proper um, point of information. So some of this is common sense, and then we vote. Unless some, if somebody appeal and you move on real fast. But what's ironic about it is the people that's saying don't do it, do it just as much as others. Yeah. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman uh, Galloway and Miss Fields, and then we have to wrap up this. Yeah, we have And we have to set a date when Miss Coco. Yeah. Point of information. Before we wrap up, can you give a summary of motions that's been passed? Now, that is not a good word of information. Okay. That's not related to the rules. There wasn't nobody talking. There wasn't nobody talking. Then you should have raised your hand and asked him. I did ask him for permission. But he already told you what he's speaking at. Don't go, please. I'm in the game. So the motion on the floor is to an appointment. I got you. We're not through, RJ. Please don't interrupt us. So the motion on the floor was 
the, the point of order on um, what is the motion on the floor right now? Can you repeat it to me? In order to call the point of order specific rule, oh. the number of the rule okay. is has to be stated or is okay. an abuse of the point of order. Okay. Um I don't want to call for the question because yeah, but you guys come on. I mean what are we doing? I'm done. But I want I want my colleagues to think about that when other people have right. something to say as right. well. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. You. I was going to say that I think that uh, the member stated earlier the best reason, okay, to approve this. And I think other members are trying to confuse the motions. This motion is if you're going to call a point of order, you have to state the number of the rule being broken. You have to be able to identify it, the rule, and be able to read the rule. It takes the onus away from uh, the committee who has to, you know, spend time trying to find that. And it also makes it very clear whether you have a legitimate point of order or whether you're just making something up. And um, I believe that the last part of that motion is or it's an abuse of point of order because we've had many abuses of point of order um, going on. So this simplifies it. If you can't come up with the rule number of the specific rule you're saying is being broken, then you're just wasting our time. So I think we should support, should support this motion. Okay, it's time to vote. Yeah, I'm going to turn it. Have I spoke twice? I think he did. You don't remember, but he knows. No, I don't know nothing. Don't speak for me, please. I don't know. Thank you. Um, yeah. That's the problem we got. When, when we address a chair, we got a whole lot of people talking. And that happens repeatedly in our meetings, Coco. When you got a chair, they debate with the chair just talking out of order, trying to debate and convince the chair prior to rulings, and it's causing chaos. And they don't understand it. We can have a floor. A chair can recognize it. Now, if they want to do a point of order and say he spoke twice, but what they're doing is this. I'll wait till you read her stuff if that's if that important to her. Well, you were talking to the chair. Now, see, he's out of order. Yeah. You were talking to the chair. I got the floor. Yeah. I can say what I want till I'm ruled out of order. You ain't got the floor. That's where the problem come in. Whether it's a chair, it be two and three of them in a caucus. They, in a, I don't think there's no need to really attempt to get some civility here because that's a big issue. Every meeting we have, whoever's chairing, whichever member, if they're in the group, they just talks out loud and convinces the chair, debating the ruling before the chair say something. And you just witnessed it here. And it happens over and over and over. We can never get to a civil meeting if people blurt out like that when people say points about and influence the chair before we get to debate, but it happens repeatedly. And I think they don't really realize the big abuse. And so depending on who the crowd is, just then, I'm talking to the chair, three people out loud talking. Some of them sitting right next to them, they just talk. That's, it's wrong, it's out of order. It can't happen that way. And it happens repeatedly. I can see I'm experienced and I'm living. And so I don't know what people are looking at on TV, but I know one thing we look at in our rules and even in the open meetings that you don't make decisions and get together outside of meetings and come in here to caucus and be it. And one of them is... All quarter of the day. Is that a privileged motion that can just be hollered out? What's the orders of the day? We on a motion? Yes. And the motion is what? To vote on uh, a brief regarding the breaches. So what the call for the orders of the day was because what you're talking about is not related to the motion on the floor. It is the breaches, a point of order breach. Yes, it is. I'm talking about people just interrupting the chair. That was relevant to a breach. Yes, it is. When people is out of order and we talking about a point of order, Coco. Um, in my opinion, Mr. Chair, I'll appeal to you. 
talking about people interrupting that is a breach. And I'm talking about how those breaches is applied um, fairly. And so therefore, you the one that ruled as to whether or not that's relevant in a breach. She called for the orders of the day. I said, I'm on the orders of the day. And I asked, what was the orders? Because I'm going to tell you, frankly, I didn't know a motion was on the floor. I thought we were going to wrap up. The I ain't voting for the, the Ms. 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 Coco, the floor. why can't I about the motion that is on the floor, and I'm going to answer What you hollering at me for? Because you were hollering at me. No, I was it not. You wrong. <laughs> so, uh, Ms. Coco, no, I was not. Okay. No, I was not hollering at you, so you should know who hollered at me. Hey, Mr. Chairman, chairman okay. let me be excused okay. from myself. It's a cultural difference at this table. Clearly. You can come to this meeting and then howl it and talk with a certain demeanor toward me and don't want me to talk with a certain demeanor toward you. It's highly disrespectful to this council person. When I do it to them and change my voice, it's chaos. So you are not a good example of how people should not talk to people in this meeting, ma'am. I don't care who you is. Point of order. Point her order. Catch that when she changed her voice. That's what y'all do. Mr. Mr. Griggs, you don't ask me out. I'm tired of white folks talking about two different standards. Oh, yeah, she, yeah, you're white, Coco. And you acted yeah, like you, they say I am. You don't do that at me. You respect me. He can't continue to talk. Don't give me no false claim of what I did. Raise my voice. You a lie. You lie. I don't like people Mr. lying. Mays. Now my voice is raised. Right. You see that mess? Yes, I see it. Yeah. Well, That's a mess. A question. And right. That's a didn't mess. Allow her to and she her. talking about how we should have. Point of order. She was out of order. You should have called her for that. Y'all check me. No, we got a motion on the well, floor. We need to put it back in order. So. This is ridiculous. So all okay. All in favor of this motion that's... Uh, the point of order must be uh, actually stated as to what the point of order is. All favors, raise your hand. All, okay, not in favor. Okay. Any abstentions? Yeah, I don't stand for the reasons how that fell apart. I don't understand the state of She out of order. What is she out of order? A rescheduling another meeting before we adjourn this. There's some white folks in here arguing and fussing and making faces at me. Let's get to that point. Is this what you in two weeks? And kept a Coco, Moco, or Roco. Here she didn't come in making faces and hollering at me and lying, accusing me of hollering at her. I'm hollering now. In I ain't seen these white folks coming up in you here. So, yeah. You see that? It's on film. Her uh, face was frown and to ugly, to hollering at me. Need to leave and kissing Kate's name, but. You, you, know you see that? It's a, it's white folks. A cultural difference. Is it intentional or unintentional? That they got a cultural difference. No, 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 no. I must do This is a mess. I wouldn't bring her up in here, hypocrite, talking about how people should address people. I've been in and out of this mess. And they've been running. And here she done frowned at a council and sitting at this table. Who do you think you are? Thank you, Ms. Coco. I ain't stunned, Ms. Coco. You see that? I. I make a motion. I ain't said it. I make a motion. You, you disrespect. I second that motion. Who you think you is here for Talking about how people should talk to people. And here you done proud. Isn't it funny? You and Kate Fields think it's funny?